Every May, the city of Indianapolis comes to life with the sound of speed. From the largest half marathon to the roar of precision-built cars preparing for the largest single-day sporting event. But today is a day when most Hoosiers call off work and head to the Speedway. Carb Day offers the fans one last chance to see the Indy cars take their final laps in preparation for the Indy 500. A chance to see future talent showcase their skills in the Firestone Freedom 100 race. And a time for the crews behind the drivers to stand center stage in the pit stop competition today friday starts the weekend as indy's extra holiday begins next day on Sunday will bring a larger crowd to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's carb day and the fans are here for a triple header that includes activity on the famed oval and on pit lane. First on the agenda today will be the final practice for the 33 drivers who qualified last weekend for Sunday's Indianapolis 500. After that, the Firestone Freedom 100 for the Indy Light Series. And then crews will strut their stuff in the IndyCar Pit Stop Challenge. Last Saturday, one of the local favorites, Kevin Lee, did, uh, did what uh, many said couldn't be done. Well, Bob, I love this day, not just because of how fun it is and what a party atmosphere it is, but it means we're almost ready for race day. Two days away from the greatest spectacle in racing. Here's Ed Carpenter. He just went out for one quick lap for a system check, came in. They did a time pit stop. He is one of the stories this week. He won the pole last week in the first American since 2006 with Sam Hornish Jr. Hornish, by the way, won that race that year. And Carpenter has an opportunity. It may have been a surprise that he won the pole as a single car team, but keep in mind, he has won two of the last six oval races. He says they don't need to do a lot today. The original plan was 10 laps. They'll double that up a little bit, maybe 20 laps to deal with the cool conditions. 54 degrees, track temperature of 79 right now. But he says they don't want to get fooled. They have a great race car. Now let's welcome Robin Miller. Thanks, Kevin. You know, uh, I've been coming here longer than you've been alive. This is my 55th straight year. And it gets, it's just the same atmosphere on, on Carb Day because everybody's geared up and they get their race face on and suddenly all the PR stuff goes out of the window and they're concentrated on racing. But right now, Ed Carpenter's on pole, but it's been an Andretti month. And so far, it's been an Andretti year. They've won three of the first four races. All five of their cars are in the top nine. And right now, they're the team to beat. It's not Ganassi, it's not Penske, it's Michael Andretti's team. And you can choose from any of the five. But the guy that's really got people talking, rookie Carlos Munoz. He's in the middle of the front row and he's been fast all, just all month he's been fast. And, and people are worried a little bit about he's running a real low line. Well, guess what? They said the same thing about Montoya, and they're both from Columbia, Marty, so I think they know their way around here. Well, if there's one Penske guy that can keep up with him, many people think is actually A.J. Allmendinger. And back this week calling the shots for A.J. is the captain, Roger Penske. We missed you last week. You were in Italy. How was your trip? Well, I had a great time. I had a chance to run the Mila Miglia with Mario Elian, who started Ilmore, so we had a great day. Unfortunately, we were watching it on our iPad and saw we were great before the last nine but uh, AJ's done a great job Will and Elio I think we've got a great shot this year these are going to be great cars going to be a great race Carpenter congratulations to he and his team for what they've done but it's going to be a very competitive race and we're excited to be in it talking to Tim Sendrick he said your cars are very close to those Andretti cars what do you want to find in this final practice session to kind of catch up a little bit well I don't think that we're going to do anything special here because it's much cooler today than it'll be probably on race day I think we just want to be sure everything's right we've had the cars apart chance to get them back get the drivers kind of ready to go run in some packs and uh, get ready for, for Sunday we don't want to make any mistakes today for sure finally talk about the job that AJ has done he has fit right in in this car well, I think he's a racer. Uh, he took time to get up to speed. I think he's had great help from both Will and also uh, Elio. And Uncle Mears also has kind of been his mentor here. So to me, if he listens to those guys and stays cool, he can win this race. Never hurts when Rick Mears is your mentor, does it, Bob? <laughs> Absolutely. Four-time winner at the Indianapolis 500. And there's the three-time winner looking for victory number four on Sunday. Well, we're glad to have Roger back. This is what he attended last week. What a great classic event. Amazing when you see 
this type of backdrop that yet they're they're sneaking off and checking the iPad to see how qualifying is going <laughs> at the Speedway. Really interesting to note that the rookie drivers in both Andretti Autosport and Roger Penske's teams were the fastest. They outqualified the veteran members of the team. On the track, that is Will Power making his way onto the two and a half mile oval, staying in the warm up lane while the car gets up to speed and power has not gotten off to a very good start Wally no he hasn't boy what a this is the spot to turn it around right here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway but yeah he these guys have really struggled they've had you know they've had the speed but they just haven't been able to close the deal this is a one hour practice period final opportunity for the cars to be on the track prior to the start of the race on Sunday Will Power starts outside of row number two. He qualified at 228.078 miles an hour last weekend, Marty. And Bob, you talk about the season they've had so far. I asked Will last week, is this the most frustrating season you had? He said, no, because of what Wally just brought up. They've had plenty of speed. He said, if we didn't have speed, I would be worried about it. What we need is a little luck to go our way. And I asked him about the oval situation. Clearly, ovals have not been his strongest suit in IndyCar racing. He said, trust me, we have the speed here as well. He said, I honestly feel like we have a car that can win the Indy 500. We just need a couple of breaks to go our way. And, and I just want to jump in here. I, I think if Will Power can just get that monkey off his back on the ovals, he once he gets past that and through that, he's a good oval driver. It's not like he can't get it done. He just has so many strange things happen. I think once he gets through that, he's going to win a lot of oval races. Here's the points leader in the IZOD IndyCar Series, Takuma Sato, and it looks like they have more than routine problems. We'll uh, chase this down and let you know exactly what's going on when we continue right now. The caution flag has come out on the racetrack for a track inspection. Obviously, one of the observers seeing something out there that is not to their liking, so they will be bringing the cars in and checking the racetrack. Paul Blevin with the yellow flag up in the starter stand. So we'll take a break right here and be back as we continue with Carb Day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Last hour of practice before Sunday. Welcome back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is sunny, but it is very cool today. And right now the track is closed because of a track inspection, but we will go back to the green flag in less than a minute. While we have the opportunity, let me introduce you to someone who I have never met, but I must admit is a driver that I admired so much, has done so much in his career, including being an Olympic champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Zanardi, it is so good to see you and welcome to the Speedway. Thank you, thank you. I really feel very much welcome. Uh, since I've arrived here, uh, people are cheering, uh, taking pictures, I want my autograph and it's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Now tell me about these medals that you won. Yeah, it's funny because you introduced me as a, as a driver and uh, <laughs> I didn't win this uh, uh, because of my driving performances. But uh, I, I mean, I was lucky enough to, to go through a, a second very intense sportive experience in my life. And uh, it's been marvelous all the way up to, to you know, the, the biggest dream uh, coming through that uh, the Nanatli can, uh, can think of, which was uh, being part of an Olympic Games. And to come home with it, uh, with this uh, medal in my hand, uh, was, uh, was certainly even more special, you know. Uh, and this fantastic. thing is heavy. This thing's like two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's not real gold, at, le at least, because otherwise, out of the two gold medals I won, at least one would have been already transformed into earrings or chain rings from yeah. my wife. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the meaning of it, uh, it's certainly very, very special. First attempt, three medals. Uh, now, wow. what happened down on the starting line a little bit ago with you and Chip? Uh, basically, in uh, 97, me and Chip, we were having a very nice evening. Uh, we were celebrating uh, the first championship with one, and... Uh, and uh, I had a money bonus in my deal with them that year, yeah. 
And uh, and he said, well, I just realized you've won a lot of money. I'm very happy for what you have said. Yeah, it's good. Huh? And he said, uh, what, what that means? That next year you're not going to push as hard since you don't have it in your deal? I said, well, just put one then. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, you want to take my blood out of my veins? So I said, oh, you can throw in something different. It doesn't have to be money. I said, what do you mean? I mean, and I said, uh, how about uh, the car I drove last year in uh, uh, Laguna Seca to win the race? Uh, and we shook hand, and a uh, few months ago, he called me up and he said, hey, you still want to get your prize, or you're going to live it here forever? And I said, hey, Chef, after so much time, I said, no, a word is a word, and uh, I have no intention to take it back, so the car is yours, and, uh, you know, let's... Uh, let's organize something uh, for you to to take delivery of and this is what basically yeah, happened yeah, this yeah. morning That's and uh, and i mean it's such a special gift for me which means uh, which represents a lot uh, for me so rumors about you want to get back in there what well, do you think you have to I when mean, you're walking around you have to you listen have to exactly hit. to my words because i don't mean anything more than what i'm gonna say i mean i'm at an age a period in my life where uh, i'm very happy with what i have but uh, uh, this does not mean that if the right opportunity would arise, I would not be curious, logically curious, to investigate the opportunity and to try to make something of it. Um, therefore, I think, technically speaking, it is possible. It's not easy because every time you think it's easy, you normally burn your fingers. I mean, these guys are top of the class and uh, the teams are fantastic and the event itself uh, it, 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 it does not mean Alex Zanardi. It's much more Alex Zanardi that needs to be part of something so special. But having said all that, if the right opportunity would arrive, uh, I would certainly look at it because I think, technically speaking, I still have the capability to steer the wheel. And, uh, I mean, if I could steer the wheel of a very good car like... Uh, you know, target Chip Ganassi Racing has been, <laughs> is been giving me in the past, uh, well, I would certainly consider the option. That, it'd be great. That would be great. That'd be great. Alex, you got a few minutes. Can you uh, turn around here and we'll uh, call a little bit of the action on the racetrack? I will say, if he was able to, if you were able to dust off that car you just got from Chip, you would just be blowing down the straightaway with the kind of horsepower you had in those days. So it's much different now than what we see Dario in the current version. You got that right. It's, it, these days, it's much more as an exercise of uh, trimming the car, getting uh, uh, the best out of the, of the power you have. Um, and, and, and that's why I think everybody is so curious and so anxious to see uh, what's going to happen in the race because uh, uh, qualifying was certainly very important but down the road uh, after after a few laps uh, the race is gonna change completely and uh, the guys that had work uh, more thinking about what the car will do down in the distance will suddenly emerge and, uh, and, and, and and probably move move up and and make the race yeah th this is these guys right now I mean they're just they're looking for the comfort zone a lot the, they've been chasing the racetrack all month long as far as temperatures go, and this is probably going to be the closest temperature-wise what it'll be on Sunday. And, um, you know, a lot of the times, you know, these guys are so focused on qualifying, they haven't run in these big packs. Let's go down to Robin Miller. Bobby, there was a, a little panic in the uh, Sato pit because they thought maybe something was wrong. Turns out it was just a loose fitting. They got that tightened up, and everything looks good. Good. AJ didn't have to smack anybody. <laughs> now, now, I want you boys to ask the Nardi, if he thinks he's going to run the Indy 500, he's got to clear it with his wife, and I'm, I'm predicting he ain't going to get the green light. <laughs> what about that, Alex? <laughs> I think I think Robin knows uh, my familiar situation pretty well, and he's probably about right, but uh, never know. It's good. Leaving the door open. Yep. In any case, you see what these guys are doing uh, right now. I mean, they're not so much interested in pulling uh, the greatest performance together, uh, you know, to, 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 to reach the top, uh, top speed. They're much more interested in see how their car is working into the traffic. So they're actually looking for traffic, uh, looking for uh, the same type of troubles you're going to get, uh, uh, you know, Sunday. Marty Elio leading this line of cars through the north end. 
I would say, as always, Bob, we can expect him to be very fast when it comes to the race on Sunday. But Wally just brought up a very interesting point. The weather drastically different today than it was in that long practice session they had last Sunday when it was very hot. So how many changes are you willing to make is the big question all these teams down here. We heard Roger Pinsky say you're almost afraid to make changes based on the weather today. And this is a very weather sensitive racetrack. So the weather supposed to be pretty close to what it is right now on Sunday. So that's the question. Wally, how many changes would you as a driver be willing to say to the crew, hey, change this based on what it is right now? Well, I, I, that's the thing. If they think that the weather is going to be close to this on Sunday, you've got to get the car comfortable today. Um, and, and like, you know, you, you're in traffic. You want it, you want it to be careful. Uh, uh, the wing changes and tire pressure changes, those are the things you really do. The adjustments in the car right now are more, you know, I, I would say they're a little bit more slighter. If temperature-wise, wouldn't you say, Jan, that you've got to make bigger swings at it to get the car handling right because of the track temperature? Absolutely, and I think that there's, there's just a good balance there. You hear Roger Penske saying, be so sure not to trip yourself up. Eb Carpenter, of course, is one of many people that ran early in the week. So when the, when the track opened, the Andretti team, Ed Carpenter, quite a few ran a lot of laps, and it was cool, if you remember, Wally, at the beginning of the week. So those that have banked a lot of laps in the cool will be hesitant to make any big swings today. Right. Interesting also, when we saw Sato there, we heard about a loose fitting. What they were doing was they were going to every piece of that engine and trying to get the oil, because it most likely was an oil fitting, which is why we saw smoke, and that's why they've been trying to get all that off so it doesn't end up on the racetrack. Kevin? And Ed Carpenter has worked his way up to speed over 220 so far. But as I mentioned, he's not too concerned about what happens today. What's interesting, though, is his family situation. His uh, mom, Laura, and there's his sister, Lauren. That's his wife, Heather, there as well. But Lauren was not at the pole day last week. And she has missed both his wins, both his IndyCar polls, and she's superstitious. She told Ed, I don't think I can come to the race <laughs> on Sunday. Ed said, no, 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 no. You've got to come to the race. And just a few minutes ago, I talked to her again, and she still seemed a little bit reluctant. But Lauren said that, you know what? I was here 10 years ago when he won the Freedom 100, the Firestone Indy Lights race for A.J. Foyt. So I do have that going. And ultimately, Ed has won these races because he's a competent, he's a good race car driver. I think she is going to be here on Sunday. She graduated from Notre Dame, by the way, last week. If I didn't mention why she wasn't here last weekend. So she had a really good excuse. Yep. Carlos Munoz has been a star for Andretti Autosport. 21 years of age, he'll start second in the middle of the front row on Sunday. Munoz at 218.4 miles an hour, out qualifying his four other team members on that team. So See, I don't think a guy like him has a lot of pressure. I mean, this is his, it, when it's your rookie year, you just don't know really what to expect, so you just... And, and you look at the line he runs, he runs a little bit different line than a lot of these guys, but sometimes it's better if you don't know better. <laughs> One day in the uh, practice, it was early in the week, he was out there with his other uh, teammates, and he got the left side tires down off the racetrack, and the car bottomed out on the rumble strips and didn't miss a beat, didn't uh, even I don't know flinch. if you want to keep doing that one. No, probably not, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he definitely had a moment, shall we say. All right, back with more in just a moment. We are at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it's Carb Day final hour practice for the 33 qualifiers. Well, Sunday morning, the Formula One World Championships arrived for the first time on NBC. It's the most prestigious race of the Formula One calendar. Don't miss the Monaco Grand Prix Sunday morning at 7.30 Eastern on NBC. Unfortunately, I didn't draw the assignment to go to Monaco, but I'm sure that Lee Diffie is having a great time over there, and what a place to uh, visit, Alex. Oh, it is very special, but I think it's one of these races where the drivers, they do enjoy themselves more than the fans because uh, in reality, it's under the, the, the spectator's point of view, it's, it's a, an incredible mess. Um, you sit in a place where you see cars going by every two minutes or so, and, uh, and it's certainly very, very exciting to, to, 
uh, to hear the noise, to sniff uh, the fumes, uh, uh, to see the speed of the car. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's a big sacrifice to attend to a, to a race like this from the fans' point of view in relationship to others. But for some reason, whatever goes on that weekend uh, uh, out of the next to the to the Formula One uh, GP makes that event, uh, I mean, special above all the others. And uh, that's why it's been uh, so successful through the years. Um, because as, as, as the race itself, technically speaking, there are other places where I'm sure, uh, you know, you could catch uh, better action, more overtaking. Right. Uh, you know, technically speaking, the race can be more interested. But, uh, yeah, Monaco is Monaco. <laughs> it's like Indianapolis, you know. It's, uh, it's such a great event. But this one on top is uh, normally provides also fantastic show for the fans. And uh, that's why I'm so excited to be here. And... Uh, and, and not, not so disappointed that I cannot be in Monaco this weekend. Well, the Andretti name known both, of course, in the Indy cars and in Formula One, and we are watching Marco Andretti. He has the outside front row starting position for Sunday, qualifying at 228.261. Kevin. Bob, when you walk up and down pit road and talk to drivers, people that work with teams, people that cover the series, I think Marco Andretti's name is the one that probably comes up the most as their pick to win the Indianapolis 500. He's had great chances before. He led the most laps last year, although he said last year wasn't one of his better cars. He wasn't that happy, but he came in even more confident this year. He's been off to a great start, best start ever this season. Kyle Moyer said here today they don't have a lot to do. They just want to check fuel loads a little bit, make sure the low fuel collector is working. Uh, double check the balance but he said we only want to, want to run about 30 laps if you see us running 40 that means we've got a problem but they feel very confident about that race car for sunday came very close to winning the 500 in his rookie year of 2006 when he got beat coming down the straightaway for the checkered flag by sam Hornish jr and kevin your point there about the andretti autosport is that they've been very careful about not tripping themselves up remember before qualifying they did not run the morning practice so they're going forward the same kind of strategy that they've used. Hey, we have data when the track is cool. Let's not go out there and confuse ourselves. So they have tried to say, okay, when we're running in conditions that aren't representative of when we really need to deliver, we're going to be cautious. Michael Andretti, Marco's dad, never was on the pole position for the Indy 500. His best start was third in 86. Mario was the last Andretti to sit on the pole, and that was in 1987. There's our own Townsend Bell leading that trio there. Do these cars draft differently than they did last year? Do you have to be closer to do the slingshot, or is it about the same? It should be about the same, if not better, than last year. They're expecting, if the conditions are cool like today, everybody, Alex, as you know, is going to be happy with their car today. When it's cool, you're like, oh, I love this. Lots of downforce. The car feels great. Last year, it was smoking hot, and that made life a lot more difficult. Yeah, it looks like a lot of these guys are working on their timing, too. You're seeing, especially coming up the straightaway, you know, when they're making the move, they're trying to anticipate when they should make the move to be able to make a clean pass going into turn one. Oriel Servia had a great race last year, had a miserable month, really, until race day arrived, and then by the time the race was over, he had put on an outstanding performance. Starting 13th inside row number five this year, qualifying at 226.8, Oriel Servia. Marty. Well, a moment ago, earlier, Oriel Servia and uh, and a couple of other guys today simulated a start to try and get ready for the race runs. He called the last 20 laps of last year's race the greatest 20 laps of his life. So certainly expecting very good things in all of these cars, the Panther cars, very good, and they're expecting good things on Sunday afternoon. Very good and race trim and his teammate J.R. Hildebrand very happy with things as well and I talked to him and he said just so confident right now. J.R. is usually a very humble guy. For him to exude the confidence he has this weekend is pretty uncanny and pretty rare for him as well. He said race trim wise I knew we could run with the Andretti's last Sunday so we're very happy with race trim on this car and part-time team owner Jim Harbaugh part-time football coach as well will be the driver of the pace car this weekend as well Bob. And, of course, J.R. Hildebrand also almost ran or won the 500 in his rookie year. There is Jim Harbaugh, who was named just a couple of days ago as the pace car driver for this year's Indy 500. Back to 
of the action on the track. A lot of jockeying for position. We swing back, we see a couple Honda cars. There's Dixon. Interesting, and, and by the way, those colors right in the middle, they're the green and yellow and black. That's Catherine Leg. That car has been repainted in the Angie's List color. So oftentimes during the week between qualifying and the race, you have new sponsors and new colors. So completely different for Catherine Leg. She was the slowest qualifier. She'll start 33rd on Sunday, but the real important thing is that she got into this car with no laps until Sunday morning, and within 20, she was up to qualifying speed. So a great job by Catherine Leg to get that car in the field. Look at this. This is great stuff. That's Charlie Kimball down to the inside. Couldn't make the pass in one. And one thing that's interesting, Bob, so many people said leading up to carb day, will Honda, which is in the back of Charlie Kimball's car there, and Scott Dixon, who follows, will they be able to pull a rabbit out of the hat? Remember, they were locked out of the fast nine and qualifying, and the fastest man at the top, just as we saw that, Scott Dixon with his teammate Frank Keaty right behind. The same thing they did last year. Honda looked like they were in trouble, and then all of a sudden, the carb day, pow, they let him have it. He well, moves to the top at uh, 224.870. Yeah, they suddenly look stronger in, uh, in, uh, in the race configuration than they did in qualifying. But in any case, what uh, really strikes me is the fact that, uh, you know, in spite of all these computerized simulation programs they have these days where the setup of the car is not longer a guessing. I mean, I remember even in my days, uh, you could run probably with a very similar result, uh, two setup completely different, one to the other, and of, of course a completely different outcome throughout the distance of the race, but in terms of pure performance over the distance of one lap, the car would react in a very similar way. Well, these days, you, if you look at the setup sheets of all these cars running, uh, you will find very, very small differences, because with the simulations they have, they know which kind of springs, which kind of shock absorber they have to have uh, the right height and everything but still the small details uh, that you can change on the last minutes are the ones uh, which will make you lose or win the race and that's what these guys are, are really checking uh, right now and, uh, and it's amazing because at the end of the day you can work in the computer as much as you want but practicing is really the, 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 the final moment where uh, you know, you can uh, you can take your guess and uh, how precise your guess uh, will be. Uh, well, only on Sunday we'll uh, we'll find that out. Let's go down to Robin Miller. All right, boys. I covered this guy when he played for the Colts. He's the guy that in Indianapolis he got in Indianapolis excited about football. 1995 when they almost made the Super Bowl. He coached in the Super Bowl last year and got beat by his brother. And now he's driving a pace car. What's the most fun, Jim? Well, uh, the Super Bowl was pretty darn. Yeah, it's pretty darn good. Uh, it was a, a great thrill to get there. Then it was a bitter disappointment to lose the game. But, uh, you know, now we're back at the beginning, getting ready for next year. Okay, you got hooked on this the first time you came out here, and you liked it right away, and you were out here watching practice and qualifying. Part of the Panther team ever since its formation. You're driving the pace car now. Do you like going 140 miles an hour? Are you nervous at all? Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I need to get some work. Uh, took a couple laps with uh, Johnny Rutherford uh, this morning. Well, he can't see. He's blind. You need to get a guy that can see. He's going to coach me up, so I feel good about that. I got him in my corner. But, uh, yeah, I think I'll, uh, I'll own it by the time I get a few more practice laps in. But uh, these guys are fast, fast, right? It's fun to watch. All right, Jim. Well, we're glad you're here. Always good to be back to you, Kevin. All right, the pole sitter is out of the car, done with his work for the day. Ed, how was it? That was good. You know, it's a... It's a beautiful day right now. It's great, great conditions out there. So, um, yeah, just continuing to stick to our plan. We went out, everything still felt good from where we were on Sunday. Really happy with the car. It would have been fun to stay out and play longer and, and get in the draft a little more. But, um, you know, I think we still have a fast car. Um, you know, we're about to board right now, but that doesn't mean much. And, uh, we feel pretty good with things. What's the week been like for you? Uh, it's been it's been crazy. You know, I think we had 16 appearances yesterday, but it's been a lot of fun. You know, I'm just trying to enjoy it. You know, opportunities like sitting on the pole for the Indianapolis 500. You know, it, it's it's maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity. So it's been busy. I, I I was getting a little tired, but just trying to have fun and enjoy the fans, enjoy the support, and uh, looking forward to a great great race. 
Good luck on Sunday. Thanks. Ed Carpenter starts from the pole, and we've got an issue there. Anna Beatrice, Bob. Anna Beatrice has front-end damage on that car. Not sure exactly what happened, but anyway, the car has been damaged. We will investigate and bring you information in just a moment. It's been an absolute thrill and pleasure for me to welcome up here to the booth Alex and Artie. Alex, thank you very much. And that would be great if you could come back here and be a driver in the Indy 500. Thank you for having me. And <laughs> who knows? Time will tell. <laughs> Alex and Artie, and we will be back with more from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in just a moment. Welcome back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're in part one of part three. And there are three different events here this day. At 12.15, the Firestone Indy Lights will race in the Freedom 100. And then about 1.30 this afternoon, the IndyCar Pit Stop Challenge will get underway. We are now in the final practice period. However, we are under caution because of Anna Beatrice's car that apparently uh, had some contact with the wall entering the pit. People in Indianapolis find any excuse whatsoever, the carb day flu, whatever, they don't go to work on this day. They come to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, getting all psyched up for the 500 on Sunday. Great crowd on hand, as it always is, and a very enthusiastic crowd because a lot of these people are teenagers and uh, college students who are, you know, stretching their legs a little bit, having just graduated or about to graduate, but great to have everybody here at the Speedway way today while we have a moment and while the track is yellow we will run through the starting lineup for Sunday's race that looks like a tire mark on that on that uh, nose there Jan hmm. well, there was some contact there somewhere Row number one, Ed Carpenter, he won the pole Carlos Munoz a rookie will start in the middle of the front row and then Marco Andretti Second row for Sunday's 500-mile race will include E.J. Viso, A.J. Almendinger, the fastest of the Penske boys, and Will Power. Row number three, Ryan hunter Ray, the series champion, Elio Castroneves going for number four, and James Hinchcliffe, who's won two races this year in the Eyes on IndyCar Series. Fourth row, J.R. Hildebrand, Alex Tagliani, pole sitter from two years ago, and Tony Kanaan. Row number five, Oriel Serbia, Justin Wilson, and Sebastian Bourdais. Inside of row number six will be Scott Dixon, then the defending race champion, Dario Franchitti, and Takuma Sato, the points leader in the series. Charlie Kimball, James Jakes, and Simon Pagino will make up row number seven. In the eighth row, Townsend Bell, Ryan Briscoe, last year's pole sitter, and Simona De Silvestro. Ninth row consists of Joseph Newgarden, Graham Rahal, and Sebastian Saavedra. Next to the last row, Tristan Fautier, Anna Beatrice, and Pippa Mann. And in row number 11, Connor Daly, another rookie, Buddy Lazier, the most experienced driver in the field, and uh, Catherine Legg. All right, let's make predictions, shall we? Okay, who's first, Robin? Well, I'm the oldest. I ought to be first. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's going to be Marco Andretti. I mean, it's uh, I know the Andretti curse has been going on a long time, but I mean, he's always good here, and he's been one of the fastest guys, and he just seems to have a confidence he didn't used to have. And Kevin, that's who I'm going to bet. And if I was out there in the betting world, I'd go the other way because I never I'm never right. That worries me because I'm thinking along the same lines. I, I think not only is he do, that doesn't really mean much, but he has been prepared. They had a different philosophy coming in. They just happened to qualify up front, but their goal, their strategy all week, all month long has been let's have good race cars. They've worked and used the multiple car team, five cars running together. They understand how this car is going to work in the draft. They've done all kinds of conditions. I think there are eight or nine that I won't be surprised at all that can win this race, but if I have to pick somebody, I'm taking Marco Andretti. Marty? Okay, this is frightening. I walked down to Marco Andretti's pit because that's who I was going to pick. In fact, Kevin's right there. See, He's Kevin's in trouble. Right there. See, Kevin went to pick the same guy I was going to pick, and Robin picked him. So you know what that means, Bob? 
I can't pick Marco Andretti. That's I'm right. sorry, I cannot pick him, <laughs> Wally. So who am I going to pick? Can I? Can you come back to me in a second? <laughs> no, I, I come on. Someone? No, I'm kidding. I'm going to pick <laughs> A.J. Allmendinger because I think it's going to be wow. a mix of experience, and I think it's going to be a mix of bravery. I think you have to drive this car a little bit different, and I think A.J. is able to take it down below the L line onto the apron. And I know everybody's saying Carlos Munoz is crazy for going down there, but it's fast. I think A.J. Allmendinger is going to do the same thing, Wally. Interesting, Wally. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy right there on the screen. I'm going to go with Hinchcliffe. Um, he's been awfully strong all month, all year. He's got a lot of momentum on his side. Obviously, Andretti team is very strong this year and at this race track, so my pick is uh, Hinchcliffe. Jan? And my pick, and very nice cue there, thank you, Chuck, is Elio Castro Neves. And you may say, well, they haven't really been on top of things. Well, that's why I'm picking them. I think the Penske team has been flying under the radar a little bit. Of course, Marty has already thrown out A.J. Allmendinger, but they look good to me under conditions. They've been staying away from super fast times and laying down toe laps. I just have a sense that the Penske team is going to be looking good, so Castro Neves is my man. Interesting. Well, I have a tendency to agree with Wally, but... Really? Yeah. But <laughs> I'm what do you mean, really? <laughs> what kind of comment was that? Bob, it's a bad path. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to go now, with Bob. I'm going to go with Ryan Hunter Ray. Ryan Hunter Ray. Yep. And by the way, for those of you who are watching and listening, uh, you might have figured out that I'm Bob Jenkins and Lee Diffie is not here. It's not necessarily that he is in Monaco. It's because Wally misses me so much. That's right. And I had to come back and fulfill his I, wish again. I'm just picking on you, Bob, because you can take a punch. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> and happy birthday, Wally. Uh, yeah, Wally celebrated you. a birthday yesterday. I don't know how I stayed under the radar for that birthday thing for so yeah. long, and I don't know what happened. Got actually, out. Actually, Jan social was media one thing got out there. <laughs> There's James Hinchcliffe. He was the fastest until a few minutes ago when Scott Dixon bumped him off the top. But Hinchcliffe's best lap has been. Uh, let's see. He, he's really jumped down now. How about that your leg up there? Yeah. 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 Wow, that is very three Hondas. Impressive. One, two, three. You know, we're all saying we're making yeah. our picks here. We may all look really silly when we say. Wait a minute, Honda pulled it out of the bag again and the yeah. Ganassi team, but I don't know. It is uh, it is amazingly impressive how, in the case of Catherine Lake here, who runs third, and you see, again, it's just a single lap in a tow on carp day, but you can't do that unless you're close. Yeah, that's right. That, that's 224 miles per hour. That's not easy to do. No. You still got to have a, a, a good car underneath you in order to do that. Simona de Silvestro right behind her, looking for the pass down at the end of the front stretch. We have four women drivers in the field this year. Last time it happened, Danica Patrick was in the field. 2011, Danica, Pippa, Anna, and Simona. Take out Danica and add Catherine Legg to that list, and you have the four that are in this year's field. I'm going to change my pick. Uh, wait, wait a second. What? I, I've decided that I, I decided that I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm picking Dario Franchini and Scott Dixon to finish in a dead heat. <laughs> wow. What changed your mind? He looked fast. No two of us are ever right, and... It's just like Jan said, they kicked everybody's butt last year, and Honda, if it's good, you know, they get good mileage, what's wrong with us? Simona Di Silvestro has been working in traffic today and actually working with her teammate, Tony Kanan. Tony, advise her, you need to figure out when to pass because if you time it improperly, then it's going to take you five laps to get back up there to have another opportunity. She's not quick today, but she wasn't worried about speed. She said she wanted to work on pitting off of turn four and getting in the box. Even though they've worked on pit stops, it's a little bit different in a more of a race type of situation. Speaking of Kanan, he started a campaign earlier this month via Twitter and social media to find some Simona, a boyfriend. Her response was, oh, great. And, uh, she's getting all kinds of resumes, people applying. Tony, though, says she doesn't get to choose. He and the engineers get to have the final choice. Yeah, thanks you, a you lot, can, teammate. You, you can, uh, <laughs> so you send in a resume? <laughs> and an 8x10 glossy. Yeah, yeah. Picture is required. Yeah, 
Yes, Tony Kanaan is quite the prankster with his teammates. He put lead weights in her rental car hubs the other day. Well, actually, no, he got wheel weights, that's right, and put them, he put a whole stack of wheel weights inside the rim on each of the four <laughs> wheels, and the thing just, like, vibrated all the way back so that you could barely drive the thing over 50 miles an hour. Well, there would be a lot of people happy if they could see Simona's teammate, Tony Kanaan, win the Indy 500. He is a greatly loved race driver at this track. There's Alex Tagliani in the Barracuda Networks car. He was the fastest Honda in qualifying. And he's sixth on the board at the moment, so going nicely. And, and going back to what Kevin mentioned, they're trying to time this right, because if you don't time it right, see what happens right here? These cars are get all, there's five or six guys back. Kimball tried to make the pass, didn't pull it off, and look, Look how far front that front oh, yeah. car just pulls away and it stacks everybody up. So timing these passes are really, really important because this race track is all about momentum. And by the way, some breaking news that it was just an hour or so ago in the driver's meeting that Bo Barfield declared how he was going to rule in regards to blocking or defending. You will be allowed to go and defend, but you have to leave, just like last year, right in this situation where you go side by side, you have to leave a car width to your left, and he is going to associate that for people like we just saw with Joseph, Joseph Newgarden. Getting around Sebastian Bourdais. Let's talk with the legend, Mario Andretti. Mario, I'm a little bit worried for Marco's chances because at least three of our on-air reporters picked Marco to win the 500. How do you feel about his chances? Well, uh, I wish it was that simple. You know, obviously, uh, I think he's definitely a legitimate contender for this race, and uh, and that's what we got to go with. Um, you know, the rest we keep our fingers crossed, and uh, hopefully the team will minimize mistakes and Marco will and uh, I think that's that could be the ticket the whole, the whole team is strong a lot of people are saying I'll take Andretti Autosport against the field but what have you seen from Marco this year he talked about going to a driver's coach especially for the road and street courses in the offseason have you seen him take another step forward this year oh for sure I think uh, no question about it some of uh, his focus has really beginning to pay off and the fact that he's been able to bring results right from the start of the season I think it reinforces your confidence and uh, you know coming here and being competitive right out of the box you know all of this plays and uh, again uh, there's really no better way to get into the race than to have all of those aspects working for you good luck on race day Mario Andretti by the way auctioned off a pace car ride yesterday for the Indy Family Foundation got $4,500 that's well worth it for a ride around here with the legend there's a shot of Marco Andretti as he continues to get in some practice laps. The streets of downtown Indianapolis are pretty much vacant. They're all out here at the Speedway. Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti, and Catherine Legg, the top three in practice. Tonight, the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs continue on the NBC Sports Network. The Senators take on Sidney Crosby and the Penguins in a crucial Game 5 in Pittsburgh. Coverage begins tonight at 6.30 Eastern on the NBC Sports Network. Practice winding down here. Just a little bit more than five minutes to go in the session. Still a lot of drafting and running together out there. And Bob, who is on the top of the time charts? E.J. Viso, just as we were going to break, topped Scott Dixon. So E.J. Viso is now the fastest of the day with uh, a lap of 225.304, and he's the only driver to achieve 225 in this practice period. And I will tell you that in the, on that lap, he did 232.8 on the straightaway, and that's with lower boost than qualifying, so the draft is well in effect. And like you mentioned earlier, Young, the track conditions are probably the best it's been all month here. There's a lot of grip on the racetrack as well because of the cooler temperatures. We found out what happened to Anna Beatrice. She ran into the back of Munoz coming in the pit area. Uh -huh. And you said it looked like a tire, right? Yeah, yep. there's a tire mark on the nose of the car. So, And, and, and a, lot of, a lot of people were 
practice and getting into pit lane, you know, because that's one thing that you don't really get to do much when you're here, is you've got to run to that line as quick as you can and try to make up as much time. So there's a lot of people practicing getting to the pits. And today is the first day you can pit off of turn four. Obviously, EJ Biso is on the warm-up lane to stay out of trouble here because they're doing pit stop practice. But they can pit off of turn four right here, then jam into pit lane and find where your latest breaking point is. Well, if the person ahead of you, and there's a little lockup from Biso doing exactly the same thing. Wolf Munoz braked early, and you weren't expecting that. Pow. And Viso said they wanted to work on five or six pit stops during this hour of practice session, and he's the only one that I personally talked to, a dozen or so, that had something specific they wanted to address during this practice. He said, although the car's been great all week and very fast, they've been dealing with the vibration, so they wanted to get that settled. And Viso has uh, got his best starting position here so far. Fourth is his best in Indianapolis, and he's had a good start to the season. By far his best start to the season for E.J. Viso. You see crews practicing pit stops sometimes during practice days, and of course this is the final opportunity for them to practice under race conditions, so to speak, on this car day, and that's what a lot of drivers are doing. Now you see those pit stops, obviously, in a 500-mile race. It depends on how many yellows, but with three 500-mile races this year, maybe there could be seven or eight pit stops. You have Pocono, you got that opportunity. So. Pretty cool that you have the Triple Crown, but then when you think of it from a mechanics and a pit stop standpoint, those are gonna be ultra critical. Marco Andretti is, was on the inside, drops back in line. Oh, wow. I don't know who that white car was, that was uh, Otier, I believe. So, yeah, get back to what you uh, said a little bit earlier. So you can defend yourself, but you can't go all the way down to the grass like we're seeing right here. You have to leave at least one lane open for somebody, if they committed, to give them room down there. Yes, and the best example of that would not be the last lap. Look at Marco Andretti looking a little bit to the inside, but the last lap of the race last year when Dario Franchini came down to try to defend, he knew he couldn't go all the way to the wall. He had to leave some room. He left just enough for Sato. Same way they're going to do it this year. You cannot go to the wall here, nor can you go to the grass on the back straightaway. You have to leave room for another car. I'm going to say we're going to see a lot of people forgetting that rule when it comes on that. <laughs> Some telemetry for you in the upper right on Marco's car. It was green all the way, no lifting. When you're in race trim and you have good conditions like this, I know he's going to get a great draft from his teammate James Hinchcliffe here. The second quick, so it's Viso, Hunter Ray, Dixon, Borday, Franchitti, James Jake, sixth, and Catherine Legg, who was third just a few minutes ago, is now down to seventh. Marco is eighth. Marty? A oh, one on three wide there, Bob. <laughs> Marco trying to put it in three wide between the Penske teammates. Very little panic in the Penske pits right now. The fastest Penske car is A.J. Allmendinger, who is 10th. And everybody's wondering why A.J. has been so fast here, why the Mar Carlos Munoz and Marco Andretti. That's because one of the Penske engineers told me they're being very aggressive. That's one of the keys to why they're so fast on the racetrack. And one of the things, Wally, is that A.J. Allmendinger NASCAR experience here too, going below the apron, below the yellow line, like Carlos Munoz, and that helps the car turn. That's what this car needs, they're saying, getting below that white line down there, trying to get that car to turn, and that's pretty much how you have to run a cup car here, isn't it, Wally? Well, you do, and, and, the, and there's actually grip down there. What, as much as these cars run on this racetrack all month, there's actually a lot of grip down below that line. Now, also, with the stock car, they slide about 10 times more than what these cars do around this place. But uh, listen, if you're used to doing something and you're comfortable doing it, if the line, if, if you like doing that line, go for it. Up at the top, you'll see the way they are running. The rookies, Almendinger starts fifth, Munoz second, Daly 31st, and Tristan Bautier 28th. Just a couple of minutes left, in, in fact, less than 90 seconds left to go in this practice period. We saw Dario Franchitti just a few moments ago. 
as he's out of the car. It looks like Connor Daly was unable to get into his assigned pit. And, and these are the things, especially for a guy like Connor, he's not used to making these kind of pit stops. And the, this practice is so, so important because if you make a mistake like that during the race, boy, you have lost a ton of track position. Marco's out of his car. He's finished for the afternoon. Townsend Bell climbs out of his machine. Townsend is 26th fastest. But there still is a lot of action on the racetrack. Scott Dixon around James Hinchcliffe. And Simon Pagano has gone to the top. Simon Pagano, the quickest at 225.8, almost 226. That's pretty quick. Oh, and here he comes. Look, he's the last in the line yeah. of five cars. <laughs> Getting quite a tow. Yeah, that's isn't very, it? very handy. <laughs> Checkered flag about to come out on the session. There's Pagano. Like we said before, you still have to have a car that works and you need to be in the ballpark if you're going to pull a big number like this. You can't put everything down to the draft. Well, Al Spire, who's retiring from Firestone, gets the honor of waving the checkered flag to end the practice period here on Carb Day. Marco debriefing with the team. And wow, some smoke coming from the back end of Ryan Briscoe's car. Oh, oh, not only smoke, but fire. We saw that in Brazil with uh, Will Power. Engine fire or something in that area. There's Will Power. Yeah, you know, he's saying, boy, that's unfortunate, but you know what? That's really lucky. The last lap of, of car day. day. If it had been a lap later, it'd be the first exactly. lap of the 500. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good point. Yep. Briscoe will end up 22nd fastest. He's the last car in line there on the left. And yeah, see the smoke? Just as he came off of corner number two. Gets the car woed down quickly and onto the warm-up lane. But then the fire broke out. It's out. Mark, uh, Ryan is okay. But a problem here in the closing seconds of the practice period. Dario Franchitti does some debriefing. We will be back to talk with some of the drivers in just a moment. And coming up, the Firestone Freedom 100 for the Indy Light Series. Here's how they ended up speed-wise. There is no better series for young open-wheel race car drivers than Firestone Indy Lights. Important IndyCar experiences are all around them racing on the same tracks and rubbing elbows with IndyCar Series drivers. But this, this is the one that tops each young driver's list. A chance to race at Indy. Series points leader Carlos Munoz leads a talented field to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Rookie phenoms Jack Hawksworth and Sage Karam also hope to cross that yard of bricks first. The Firestone Indy Lights Freedom 100, live from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, is next. Continuing live coverage of Carb Day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the NBC Sports Network as we now get set for the Freedom 100. Along with our driver analyst, Davey Hamilton, I'm Mike King, and oh, there's nothing better than being at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on a cool, crisp day, knowing, Davey, you're going to see a race. And for 40 laps, we've got 11 young drivers that are literally going to be engaged in a shootout here at the Speedway. And when you say young, they're very young very drivers. Young. Probably the youngest field of drivers we've ever had at the Freedom 100.
Happy to be with you, and we're happy to have this guy joining us. Of course, Joseph Newgarden, a winner here. A couple of years ago, we were talking during the break. I remember when you were just a kid. Yeah, now you're all grown up, two <laughs> years. Yeah, you're a veteran here at the Speedway. Uh, but give us your thoughts, first off, on your car. You just wrapped up your final practice session for the 500. Tell us about the Century 21 car. This has been a roller coaster, Mike. Everyone's like, hey, you're an Indianapolis guy. You grew up here racing go-karts. Now you're in an Indy car. I've driven here for the Freedom 100. I, I can't believe I'm up here in the booth now. Now I'm commentating for this race. Unbelievable ride. We just had practice. Final, final day for us in Carb Day and Indy car. And you know what, I'm feeling good. The Century 21 car, it has been fast, it's been beautiful, and I, I really feel comfortable going into Sunday. Last year, I did not feel comfortable going into the race. This year, it's completely different. I feel good about the race car I got. I'm excited to be out there. Yep, so uh, Joseph Newgarden with Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing as uh, we get set uh, for uh, for this race coming up, which uh, as we mentioned, uh, he was a part of just a couple of years ago. We take a look uh, at uh, championship points, and uh, no surprise both uh, to both of you, both uh, Davey and Joseph, that Carlos Munoz, who uh, had back-to-back -back wins uh, at Barber and Long Beach is the guy everyone is chasing. And guys, until this event, he had won three straight poles, but he's been doing double duty this month. Maybe he's a little tired during qualifying on Thursday. Well, I think he's going to be more excited. I mean, he has a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm because he's, his performance has been unbelievable. I mean, he's dominating in this series right now. He hops into an Indy car for his first time, by the way, and is in the middle of the front row. So very impressive uh, run by him. Yeah, back downstairs uh, to pit lane and uh, Jake Query. Jake? It's been obviously a very good couple of weeks for Michael Andretti's team. You now have Carlos Munoz in this race who is starting in second, but the majority of his laps here have been in the IZOD IndyCar, obviously. How much of a difference is it for him, and what have you had to talk to him about in terms of juggling both races? Well, it's definitely different, but uh, not much I have to talk to him about. You know, he has the experience of running here last year, so he knows what he what to expect for the, the these cars. And then uh, he's been getting a lot of great experience this week uh, driving with his teammates uh, for the big cars. So, uh, you know, he, he, he knows what he needs to do. Best of luck for a good weekend. Thank you. That's Michael Andretti of Andretti Autosport. To Kevin Lee. Sarah Fisher has a car in this race in a partnership with Sam Schmidt Motorsports, and it's her brother-in-law, Kyle Gare, right here. He's 18 from nearby Beach Grove. This is his first Indy Lights race. He's a, a USAC midget guy and all the short tracks around here. Is he prepared for this? He's very comfortable. You know, when I saw him at the opening test here, he was even more comfortable in this car than he was in his own midget. So kind of makes me nervous. <laughs> but... He feels right at home, and he gets right up to speed, and I'm confident he's ready for it. Good luck today. Thank you very much. Kyle O'Gara will start eighth, and also race the night before the 500 tomorrow night at Lucas Oil Raceway. He's got high school graduation coming up as well, and the entire Roncalli High School population got tickets to, uh, to this race from his sponsor. Okay, guys, who do you like in this one? Is, is Munoz the hands-down favorite? Well, I think he is. I mean, here's a guy that, that has so much experience. He's won most of the races this year in this class, in this series, so he's definitely my pick today. Joseph, what do you think? I think Kyle O'Gara could have a big upset here. He's got really? a great car. Wow. Great, great car. I've been able to talk to him. He feels super comfortable. He looked great in practice when I saw him here two weeks ago, but I think Davey's right. Carlos Munoz, very, very safe bet. He's going to be strong. That would be a huge upset, Joseph, given this would be his first ever start in the series. It would be massive. And I'm telling you, I've been able to set, spend some time with him. He seems comfortable. I know he's got a good race car. He's capable of doing it. Okay, so New Garden says we could see an upset. Davey Hamilton sticking with the points leader, Carlos Munoz, as we get set to drop the green flag here on Carb Day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Temperatures in the 60s, loads of sunshine. We're just about re ready for the Freedom 100 here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In fact, it's time for the command. Let's go track side. This has become just a big party. It's Race kind of a tradition. Fans. And then Boys is going to be playing there in the infield sports. today. And Brett Michaels and all, and all that. So it's a huge Let's day, a lot of fun. And having this big Bristol, sunny day out here doesn't hurt the attendance at all. And, 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 and this year, Dave, uh, you know, we've Drivers, had fields of 20-plus in, in past years. But uh, let's face it, Bob, we only have 11. So the command from Lisa Boggs as the drivers get their cue to fire up the engines on board their Firestone Indy Light Dolores. Let's take a look at the starting lineup as Carlos Munoz going off second today. Same spot he'll start Sunday in the 97th running of the Indianapolis 500 mile race. He'll be carrying the onboard camera during today's Freedom 100 coverage. You see the front row, Sage Karam with an average speed of 189.243 miles an hour. 
will be on pole, leading the field at the green flag. And, of course, we told you about Carlos Munoz and Davey and like Carlos a lot. Carlos is the guy right now. I mean, he can be beat. This is an oval, first run of the year, so uh, we'll see what he has. Well, you talk about a guy with experience, Peter Dempsey returns as Dempsey, who started 12th, the finished 15th the last year, Joseph. And Peter Dempsey desperately wanted a good finish here as he is looking for the championship in 2013. Peter's a very strong driver, and you know what? I think he's got a good car this time around, so I'm excited to watch what he does. He has a lot more patience this year. He could be a guy to watch as well. Gabby Chavez, not off to a bad start. Davey, he'll go off on the outside of route number two. Now they're one of Schmidt's cars. Schmidt has four of them total in this race, Mike, and uh, he has good odds of winning as well with that many cars in, in the field. Back-to-back -back podiums for Chavez at both uh, Barber and Long Beach. As we move to, move to road number three on the inside, Jack Hawksworth and Davey here's a guy who needs a little redemption after causing that early incident at Long Beach and taking himself and Zach Beach out of the way. And himself out of the point championship lead. I mean, so he had a huge mistake. He wants to come back, have a better race, but uh, like I said, this is, uh, is going to be a challenge. He is one of the rookies. Beach on the outside, an interesting pairing there in row number three. In row number four, Juan Pablo Garcia, one of the uh, veterans coming back in this event last year. He started 17th. He finished 11th next to him. The young man, Joseph, who you think could wind up in victory lane in an upset, making his first start in the Firestone Indy Lights series. Could be the guy. Kyle's running the 67 car. I've run it all year. Maybe it'll bring us some luck. So Kyle Ar O'Gara on the outside of row number four and row five. Chase Austin. Davey, he thought he was going to be able to run the 500. That deal kind of went away, but now here Chase Austin is back in the Freedom One. Well, he, he for sure wanted to be at this racetrack. He got it done in Indy Lights car this year. Started 16th, finished 10th here in 2012. Jorge Concalves will be on the outside of row number five after qualifying at 180. 6.183 miles an hour. And yet another newcomer to the Firestone Indy Light Series. He was pouring milk over his head a couple of weeks ago after winning the Purdue Grand Prix in both parts and the electric vehicles. We're talking about the Purdue sophomore, the rookie Jimmy Simpson. And maybe I can only imagine what it's like as we watch uh, both uh, the Pro Mazda uh, and uh, Pro Mazda cars uh, pacing the, the field out in front and one of the F2000 yeah. cars is the road to Indy, the Mazda road to Indy, Davey, in full bloom here throughout central Indiana th this race weekend. And, and it's great to give them a little exposure. The white car is a Formula 2000. That's where it all starts when you're young, 16, 15, 16 years old. And then you move into the Formula Mazda, which is right next to it in the blue car. And then the Indy Light Series that we're going to ha have a great time watching. Then on into the Indy Car Series. Joseph, you can talk firsthand about climbing the ladder. It works. The Mazda Road to Indy is absolutely the best ladder out there right now, and it worked for me, and it's worked for so many guys in IndyCar. You look at James Hinchcliffe, J.R. Hildebrand, Marco Andretti, the list goes on of guys that have made that step into IndyCar, and they've had the right training. Hinchcliffe, even, he's won two races this year. You want to ask about if he got good training in the light system and in the Mazda Road to Indy. I think it proves it absolutely that he's done it well in, in IndyCar now. Downstairs to Jake Query. Jake? Sam Schmidt, as Davey had mentioned, has over a third of the cars in this field. You have been dominant in this series. What does this track mean? Is there extra emphasis on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? I think just like everybody getting ready for the Indy 500 and the big cars, uh, we've always put a lot of work into this, uh, you know, way back, you know, started with Chris Griffiths in 2004. Uh, you spent about a month just rubbing on the cars, a lot of time, complete paint job. Uh, new body fit the whole deal and and since we hadn't had the third car in the field in Indy uh, this month our guys I think is the best our cars have ever looked going to this race so uh, you, you for sure put a lot more effort into it it's uh, Indianapolis and any victory here is special Sam Schmidt one of his cars is the pole sitter and he's hoping as everyone is that he will lead them through a clean first lap Mike yeah that's that uh, Schmidt Peterson Kerbag Janian entry that will start on pole with Sage Karam at the wheel okay Davey as uh, the drivers uh, begin to warm up the tires a bit, time for your do's and don'ts for the Freedom 100. Well, the first thing, Mike, is the, the cars. Well, they haven't been on track all week, right? I mean, so they've got to get a feel for these race cars. They got very short practice yesterday because of the rain. So don't make be, be aggressive with the start. Get, get the start in underneath their belt and feel what it's going to do before you take off. And it's the first oval race for these guys. No mistakes here. They're going very fast. As Joseph can tell you, you're, you're, this is the fastest they're ever going to be. No mistakes because all there is to hit is a hard wall on the outside. And Mike, as I always say, no pit stops in this race, so take care of your tires. You have to complete all the laps of the tires that you have on these race cars, so at the end, you want to be strong, so take care of those tires. And Joseph, when Davey says limited practice, a total between all the drivers participating, a total of 194 practice laps, as we've got the 22 car of Jimmy Simpson, 
who was set to start 11th off the track during the pace lap. It looks like cold tires yeah. there. Yeah, there the cold tires. Yeah, bit him just a bit. And as, as we met, here he is at the back of the field, set to start 11th, trying to warm him up a bit. And Joseph, what happened? There? You know, he just got on the throttle a little too quick. He's in the back there. Like we've mentioned, this is a cold racetrack. Jimmy's got very little experience in the Indy Lights cars, and they can bite you. They can turn around on you quick. I've seen that happen in the best. It definitely gets away from me sometimes. Well, we're, it was either that or the grass was a little long right in that area. <laughs> he needed to so cut, he it, to cut it down just a little bit, make it look just a little, bit, just a little better. Okay, so he is going to get up ahead of steam and join the other 10 cars as they come through turn number three. And Joseph, as we mentioned, not a lot of practice, and it shows right there, I guess, with Jimmy Simpson. And the nerves are going to be kicking in just a bit. Mazda Road Dandy on board camera with our championship leader, Carlos Munoz. Keep in mind, he became the youngest front row qualifier for the Indianapolis 500 since Rex Mays in 1935 wow. at age 21. He will start on the outside. It is Sage Karam from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, set to lead the field to the green flag. This is a nice formation. They really is. Wow. Really is on a beautiful day at the world's greatest race course. Fans will come to their feet as the drivers wait, and the green flag is out. Dave, this is a great start. Here it is. Great start, actually. And Sage, he wants that inside line, doesn't he? Oh, look at the, the Blarney car. That's uh, Peter Dempsey. Dempsey. Yeah, 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 Peter Dempsey, who we talked about earlier. Nice move there, Joseph, to go from third to second. Absolutely. You know, he's an aggressive guy, and he's more calculated now. He's always been too aggressive, but I think he's going to be strong this race. Okay, so he snookered Munoz just a he's, bit there. And you see Munoz, he's putting that wheel all the way under the white line. He's been doing that in the Indy car, actually, and it's been scaring people, so <laughs> we'll see if that bites him today. Okay, so Munoz will drop back to third as we watch Hawksworth. Now, keep in mind, Hawksworth, desperately, Davey, trying to get himself back into the championship hunt. He needs a good finish here, Davey. Well, he really needs to win. I mean, he needs to start getting some wins back under his belt. He knows how to do it. He's making a nice run right now, running side-by-side, side, actually. With, with Kyle O'Gara. Kyle O'Gara, make it look good as well. Yeah. So uh, once again, Munoz now, Joseph, he's going to look to the inside, right along the inside wall. That's a strong move. And I think you're going to see this all day. Guys are going to be passing inside turn one, like left and right. Joseph, is the slingshot effect down the straightaway, is it is it as, I guess, important or is it as pervasive as, as we see with the Indy cars? It's crucial. It's, it's very, very big in the Indy Lights car. And I'll tell you what's helping it is these cool temperatures. When it gets very cool out here, it's really easy to draft up on guys and it creates a huge hole behind you. So they've got a ton of drag coming off that car, and it's able to help him slingshot past. How about, how about O'Gara? He has moved his way up to the fourth. He's put pressure on Jimmy right now for third. Oh, well, we've got a great race right now. Top two cars. Sage Karam who started oh, on. He's got a spin. That's it. Stay off the wall. Oh, that's Kyle O'Gara. Uh, Maybe a little bit too much too soon. Uh, but he was looking you know good. The, absolutely. And the shame thing about that, you saw him coming. He was very quick. Probably just got a little too aggressive early, but, man, he was quick right off the start. Oh, uh, how unfortunate. How unfortunate. Don't know uh, until we see the replay. Davey, I don't think he was touched by another car. No, was he, he? he just lost a mic, but you know, no, no real super suspicion damage. We can see just being aggressive. Yeah. I mean, he started back, got underneath that yeah. white line, and they feel so good. I mean, as, as, as racing drivers, we can both tell you, when you're out there, sometimes the cars feel so good, and they feel like you're invincible, and they're just going to go around there. But when they step out, you hope you can always catch them. Sometimes you can't. Kyle's case, he definitely didn't catch it this and, and let's remind everyone, Joseph, this is happening at nearly 190 miles an hour. It's not like this is a light tap of the wall. That's a fast hit. You know, it's not as, it might not look that fast, but dang, they're going quick out there. And, and that's a tough hit, but I think he'll be okay. It looks like he hit it square on, so no problem. Well, here is Kyle O'Gara as, and, and Joseph, kind of interesting because you were talking about the line as we watched Munoz. And, and how low he goes in the turn. And it looked like O'Gara was running almost an identical line. That's exactly what I thought would happen to Munoz. What you saw there with Kyle is, is the trouble thing that can happen when you dip too low behind that white line. And really, it bit Kyle there. And I have not seen Kyle do that, so I, I wasn't expecting it to happen to him. But with the cool conditions, like Davey was saying, the cars are working so well, almost too well, that maybe that just pushed to the inside for him there, and he didn't expect the thing to grip up so much in the mid-corner. Well, as we mentioned, Moynihan Williams, uh, the realtor that is sponsoring this, had bought tickets for the entire Ron Colley school population. They were all here to watch their teammate today. Unfortunately, not the end that Kyle O'Gara was hoping for it ended. Along with Kevin Lee, Jake Query, Davey Hamilton, 
our special driver analyst guest, Joseph Newgarden. I'm Mike King, live coverage of Freedom 100 from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. On the NBC Sports Network, coming to you live from the world's greatest race course, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And unfortunately, we're under yellow. Zach, excuse me, Kyle O'Gara, the 18-year-old from Indianapolis, was looking to make the move underneath the five of Peter Dempsey as he was racing through turn number four. And Davey, the car simply came around on him, and he winds up in the outside safer. Well, you, you can watch his entry, Mike. He was really low on entry. Now, watch his left front. Does, not only does it get below the white line, it gets down to the concrete uh, curbing, basically. It is, it is level with the track but it's a different surface. It goes from asphalt to concrete, and that left front got all the way down and actually touched that. So just, you know, I, it's a rookie mistake. He's a rookie. He deserves it. He's going to have them, but uh, unfortunately it happened at this race, his first shot. Joseph Newgarden will start 25th uh, on uh, su in Sunday's Indy 500. He was 16th in the day's final practice. Zach Beach, what was he seeing when he saw that car spin in front of him? You know, the thing with Zach, he did a great job. He went to where the car was, and that's what you got to do. It, it's not where the car is going to be, but where it is, because... The thing is, you don't want to get collected, and Zach really had a, a tough moment there. We could have, but he made the right move. He put his car in the right place, and he avoided Kyle, which is fine there. Mazda Road to Indy onboard camera for the Freedom 100 rides with our championship leader, Carlos Munoz. Guys, take a look. Tell me what you think of the start. Well, first, I think it was a great start. I mean, they were lined up perfectly. Sometimes you don't see that. The pole center wow. took off as he's supposed to. He earned that position. But then he brought that Bellardi, uh, Bellardi car, Dipsy, with him. But uh, he doesn't keep that second spot for very long. But I think it was a good start by the leaders. Joseph, what do you think? Yeah, Sage did a nice job. The formation, again, it was so beautiful. He did a great job. Very tight. Up. Really a tight formation. Very, very tight. And you see even Munoz there right in turn one. He's already dipping that wheel underneath. And, and look he, at him again. Wow. Yeah. He's not scared of it. And he's got to be careful because the same thing that happened to Kyle will happen to him if he gets too far down there. Yeah. You made a good point, Joseph, about the temps. And you've talked about it two or three times. It, it looks like a warm day here. It is not. It's a chilly day. We're in the low 60s right now and it was in the 30s overnight here so getting tires up temp it's going to take a lap very very chilly and you know what with those cold conditions just not the tire temperature but the cars are working so well they want to hook in very hard in the mid corner and that's i can't kind of think uh, look what's at happening to these guys look, we, we're look now but we're not yet touching 60 degrees it's a gorgeous look how oh, gorgeous it's, it's that perfect. picture is it, it looks amazing it's a perfect day absolutely perfect and the fans are are enjoying carb day no doubt about it but davy davy if we compare it to last year we're 35 degrees cooler than we were a year ago. And, and one thing, Mike, just to know, if the temperature's below 50 degrees, you can't run. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, go to Jake Query. Jake? Kyle, it's good to see that you're out and you're okay, but what happened on the spin? Uh, I just had a big run on, uh, I think it was a five-car Peter Dempsey. Uh, I was coming through three, and I had a big run. I went low on him going into four. Uh, got a little bit below the white line and caught a bad wind off of his car. Uh, really sucks for the Schmidt-Peterson team. Uh, we've been really strong all month, moving through the field uh, really well. Um, just very disappointed right now. Uh, disappointed in myself, and hopefully we'll uh, see him again this season. A lot of fans here, a lot of your classmates from Indianapolis, Ron Colley High School. With that, did it come a pressure, and did it elevate the disappointment, obviously, knowing how many were here? Uh, definitely elevated the disappointment, but all the pressure that was on me was for myself. Uh, everybody's been really, really uh, relaxed this month, and uh, just disappointed. It was fun to watch you for those few laps. You were aggressive, obviously. I'm assuming it was fun up to that point. Yeah, uh, we had a really good car. Uh, we were coming to the front, but uh, we'll uh, come back. It's Kyle O'Gara, guys. Well, he calls Beach Grove his home. Of course, that's the Indianapolis area here. And as we mentioned, uh, Ron Colley High School. Day. He's, now he's, he's got to put this behind him, maybe, and graduate high school. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do yeah. that tomorrow. So what a disappointing graduation, though. I, I don't know if he can kick a smile up or not. Yeah, well, it may take a while. As we get set to bring him back to the line, green flag is out. And Joseph, right now, Sage Karam, he's on the game. It, it's a good start, but he's got to hold off Munoz. He's looking super strong. You know, these, these temperatures are incredible. I think he's sitting really good. He knows that he's got to stay up front. The key to this race is not getting out of the lead, and that's that's really important. You get past, you want to pass them right back, and I think that's what Sage's strategy is. Zach Beach would like to go to the outside. Has tried it a couple of times on Dempsey, and now Davey's going to do it again. He looks like he may have a run on him to get up there, but ugh, it's a drag race on that back straightaway. Uh, definitely Dempsey has a line going into three. So Beach on the outside, and how difficult is it, Joseph, to pass on the outside here in a lights car? The cool thing about lights cars is it does give you a little more wiggle. Room. So you see guys running two by two. That's almost impossible to do in an Indy car. You cannot get away with that around here in that car. But the Indy Lights car, it's a little more forgiving. It's a little more narrow. So you can run two by two, which is really interesting to watch. Boy, 
Munoz has it tucked right up under the gearbox. But then, Dave, it almost sounds like he missed a shift. He hit the, ri the, hit the limiter there. He hit the he? limiter, and he's probably in sixth gear, Mike. But when you draft that close, that far down the straightaway into the corner, you're going to hit that limiter. But he, he's definitely just kind of riding there, I think, just trying to Pretty smart. take the opportunity, right? These guys say, are working together, boy, which is they sure are. Yeah, look yeah. at them pushing each other away. They'll let everyone else do the battling. If, if this goes green the whole time, then they can just have a race by themselves for the finish, which would be great. Yeah, and so with that, they're pulling away, but now Karam begins to, to try to pull away just a bit. Okay, now Joseph, explain what it is. You, know, you can pull right up on, on, on the tail of another car, but how difficult is it to make the transition from there to get around the driver? Well, they're having a little bit of help today. You know, normally when it's cold, it makes that air pocket even bigger. So you're pushing a big pocket of air behind you, and you're just sucking up like a vacuum with the car behind. And as soon as you pop out, you have all that momentum. You want to stay close to the car, and you're basically using that momentum that you build behind them to work around them. Now, doing it on the outside is a little more tricky, but for sure around this racetrack with this temperature, it's really easy to get a big run. Well, we're still early on in this race, working lap 9 of the 40 that makes up the Freedom 100. This is a 100-mile race. Now, Davey, I'm, I'm curious, is Beach going to push the panic button if those guys out in front, Karam and Munoz, pull too far away? No way. Not not at nine laps. He's not. He just cruise right there and see what's going to happen. And even if the yellow doesn't come back out, they will be able to, to, to close up the gap. Now, I think that Munoz is doing a good job. I, I think that he could probably pressure for the lead, but I think he's content where he's at. Another thing when you're drafting like that, Mike, you have to pull out before you hit that red number. Once you hit that red number, you're going to lose your speed momentum and not be able to combine. What does it feel like, Joseph, in the car when you hit the rev limiter? The rev limiter kills your lap, absolutely kills your run. It's really hard to hit. It actually happened to a lot of IndyCar guys during qualifying, and it absolutely destroys your lap time. You normally lose around five, six miles per hour, so it's really important to get that momentum back, but it can absolutely kill your run. That's the worst thing you want to happen. How about three wide through through three? Yeah, no fear for these young guys, Davey. Well, I think Dempsey thought better of it. He really <laughs> had the run on both those guys. You know, he probably would have been better off just to lift a little bit to stay behind one of them other than try the three wide because what happens as soon as you get out of the throttle, you know, it's what they say, you lift, you lose around I, there. I think Dempsey two years ago would have stayed in the yeah, throttle. Right. And that's <laughs> the difference with Dempsey nowadays. Yeah, that's right. Well, the guys pulling away, Karam and Munoz, where Sage Karam is a rookie from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, driving for the winningest car owner in Firestone Indy Lights history here at the Indianapolis Motor Speed Speedway, Sam Schmidt, the Schmidt-Peterson curb Agajanian entry out in front. Karam looking for his first win here at the Speedway. And Wait for Sage Karam. It would be his first win in Firestone Indy Lights competition. There's Gabby Chavez. I think Chavez might be a little bit quicker than, than Veach, and that's what he wanted to do. He wants to get in front of Veach. He said, Veach, push me. I don't want to push you. You get behind me. I'm a quicker car. Maybe we can catch these two guys in front. Zach Veach running just behind Chavez is Chavez, the young man from Bogota, Colombian, also in one of the Schmidt cars. Carlos Munoz right now. We don't know if he's quick enough to, to get around Sage Karam, but that really doesn't matter at this point, does it, Joseph? He's, he's kind of playing it smart out there. Doesn't matter at all. You know, we've got a long way to go in this race. And really, honestly, I think everyone's playing it real smart. These, this is how the last two Indy Lights races have gone. They've been really, really tough to, to strategize everything, and I think they're all just trying to be smart. You can see Munoz here. He's not pushing the issue. He's just pushing around him, trying to stay smart behind him for the beginning of this race. Yep, so we watch as they head through turn number three onto the north chute, and now they'll make the turn into turn number four at the north end of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Sage Karam, with 12 laps complete, is your leader at the Freedom 100. the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Freedom 100 roars on, and for Jack Hawksworth, working lap 14, Davey, car got high, exiting one, he winds up, looked like a, a love tap on the wall, if you will, but there's no such thing here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it looks like he's done some damage yeah. to the suspension. You can see the right front suspension there, Mike Ben. and what happens, these guys didn't get a lot of running, as we keep saying, and then they didn't get a, they didn't get a run in traffic, and as these tires wear down, you lose a little bit of grip, you get some dirty air, and you you have to use more room in the racetrack than just uh, kind of by inches. So Jack Hawksworth, who really needed a good finish here to keep himself in the championship conversation. Joseph, meantime, the guy's fighting it out up front. Carlos Munoz, just as we went to break, decided he was going to use that cue to take the lead. Look at this pass. Picture perfect. He got it right underneath him. Is absolutely how he needed to do it in the turn one. And he's been leading this thing the whole time. Now Karam's kind of swapped positions, and he's like, all right, I'll push you now. 
So Munoz has gone to P1, but by no means has Sage Karam gone away as, look at Sage pull right up. Great shot from the Mazda Road Dandy onboard camera looking off that rear wing. Davey is ahead in the one. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's how close they run, folks. Right there it is. You'll see it all day long, and you can just see the line behind him. Now, in the background back there, you see Zach Beach. He's flirting with that wall. I mean, I mean he, he keeps taking a really high exit, and he's the car, that purple and green car, that uh, he needs to be careful as well. He's currently running in fifth place. Okay, as they set up for three, Joseph, what is Karam thinking right now as he runs second? You know, Karam's riding right now, and the big thing, you see him popping out there. He's trying to get some air on his wing on the outside, trying to keep the tires fresh. The problem is when you get too close and you stay right in the gearbox of someone, Right as you get into the corner, that starts to wear your front tires out. So Munoz is actually keeping his tires fresher. That's the advantage to being out front, and Karam's not getting that right now. Carlos Munoz, the Firestone Indy Lights championship leader. Now Gabby Chavez decides he'll take a look to the outside, and it looks like he may try to tuck up under the eight car. Sage Karam now thinks better of it. And Chavez has an even more difficult job, you know. Karam, he's, he's got the outside to work with. He's got no one in front of him. But Chavez, he's got two guys riding in both lanes. So where is he going to get some clean air? It's very difficult for him to find it. So it's even trickier, I think, being the third guy in the train. What a season so far for Carlos Munoz as Michael Andretti is telling everyone this is, this is one of the stars of the future. He has been oh so good, Davey, in this series. But he has had an outstanding month of the May. Okay, here, uh, month of May, rather. Okay, Chase Austin. Another in one. the blue car, back in, and that's almost exactly what we saw Jack Hawksworth do. Yeah, same thing, bit suspension as well. He'll become, he's still on the track, but he will be coming in momentarily. And that is the tricky thing, down to turn one, is uh, when well, oh. you see that bit, that, that totally can definitely bit, he's going to fall off the face pretty rapidly right now. Yeah, on the right front, you can see how that suspension part is just bowed just a bit. Meantime, the race up front continues, and guys, these five guys looks like they're going to go at it for the better part of uh, the remaining 22 laps. Well, these guys just need to make no mistakes. Wait till the end. We're, like, we're halfway. This lap here will be halfway through the race, Mike, so they just need to, uh, to hang on. And these have been your staple runners right here. These are the guys that have been working all season against each other and, and really a championship contend contender. So I think they're the smartest guys in the pack for sure, and they know that they still got half a race to go. It's all about a mind game around this place now for them. Only one caution to this point. It came early on when Kyle O'Gara lost control of his car, wound up hitting the safer barrier in turn four, but we have had two other cars come to pit lane with damage after they have tapped the wall. One of them, Jack Hawksworth, is with Jake Query. Jack, you were very contrite in Long Beach when you said you were too aggressive in turn number one. Now on the oval, what was it, as we moved from the street to the oval, what led to this incident? Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, what happened was I got in, I came out of the dirty air on the outside, came into the inside and just lost my front and ran into the, uh, ran into the outside, retaining roll wall and the, and the wish on the front. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's my, my fault. I'll take the, the blame, sorry for the team. But, uh, you know, I, I don't really understand what Veach was doing. He was moving up and down the track and, you know, coming from the inside. But, yeah. Take a look at it. Just run high into the wall, uh, white wall, the tires. But yeah, I mean there was a lot of moving around going on in the mix. So I was on the outside, and he comes to the outside, and then obviously I've got nowhere to go. So when I dip back in, you know, I'm getting a big dose of. Uh, you know, I've suddenly got no wind on my car and uh, no air on my car, and no downforce. So you want to, you know, uh, work hard and uh, you know, turn this thing around at the end of the day because you know we, we've got all the tools to do so and. Uh, you know, one bad race, couple of bad races, doesn't make a championship. You know, we'll come back and show we can win this thing still. Jack Hawksworth, interesting because, guys, keep in mind, Zach Beach as well as Peter Dipsy, two of the drivers that were involved in that situation on the streets of Long Beach. Joseph, in watching the replay, it looked like Zach Beach, to me, ran a pretty normal line exiting that corner. You know, and it's difficult for us because we're looking at one corner, one pass through there. Right. The big things with drivers, when you're following behind someone, you look for consistency. So when you think a guy's going to run one line, and then all of a sudden he deviates that line and starts doing something different than he's normally done, it can be difficult for you as a driver behind. So we didn't get all the info, I think, there, but I, I know what he's talking about from a driver's side. It is difficult when, when guys aren't run consistent, but I'm not going to hold anything against Beach. You know, we didn't get to see the whole scenario play out. 22 laps about to be complete as the leaders come off of turn number four at the world's greatest race course on a gorgeous carb day afternoon. Munoz is the leader, started second. That's the same place he'll start in Sunday's Indianapolis 500. 
But Davey, he's got a lot of company there behind him. His mirrors are full. And there's five guys putting pressure on him, especially those, uh, the one right behind him who uh, started on the pole, Sage Karam. He seems to be the toughest right now. He may have the fastest car. You see him pull right up in the back of the car, Mike, but he doesn't pull out. He doesn't try to pass. He may be content right now just following him around, wait until closer into this race, and uh, see if he can put a slingshot on him. Joseph, one thing that we have not seen a lot of in the last three or four years in this race is long green flag runs. You know, we, we've seen a lot of yellows, fortunately, and hope I'm not jinxing anybody, but let's hope that the, the single caution we saw for Kylo Garris incident is the only one. That being the case, how much will the tires go away from the start of this race to lap 39 and 40? Well, tremendously, and, and, and drivers haven't had to deal with that. I didn't have to deal with that in 2011. We had plenty of cautions to help us out. So these guys will start to struggle, but I hope it goes green as well, because I think you're going to see a fascinating finish here. You know, who's going to get the big run at the end? Could it be just Karam, or could Chavez do something from third? I think you'll see something spectacular if we go green all the way through. Wait, Chavez, it looks like he's got a good race car. Absolutely, and that's the thing. You got to buy your time around this place. If you don't have the yellows coming up, you got to plan exactly what you want to do in the last lap. And I guarantee you, all five of these guys are already thinking about what they're going to do. Two, one lap to go on this race. Yep. The the teammates, when it comes to this point of the race, Joseph, how much do they work together? As, as Karim and Chavez, they they are teammates, but are they working as as teammates at this point, or are they simply individual drivers out there? A lot of things go out the window specifically for this race now. If I was racing Esteban, say, in 2011 when we were running, we wouldn't even be looking at ourselves as teammates. The one thing you want to do with your teammates is you want to race them clean, you want to race them fair. But you're not going to necessarily rely on them out there. There's a lot of other guys in the mix. So at this point, I think it's a free-for-all. Everyone's out for themselves at this point. Sage Karam pulling right up on the rear wing of Carlos Munoz, Davey. And I, I just don't think anyone can really understand what it's like to pull up that close to a car as you're topping out at nearly 190 miles an hour in these cars at the tail end of, of, of the back straight and the front straight here. Unless you've done it, you for sure don't know, Mike, because what happens, your, your helmet gets light, you get lift on your helmet, there's no downforce on your car, and you even see it going to the corner sometimes, say this car, it's moving around a little bit because it's that dirty air, where you see Carlos up front just stuck like glue, so it's a different feeling, you can feel the, feel the exhaust fumes, Mike, you can, it just, a lot of movement in the car, but uh, but he has a good car right now, so he's enjoying it. Carlos Munoz took over the lead as we completed lap number 14. He's been in front for 11 circuits. 15 remain here in the Freedom 100 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The Mazda Road to Indy. Onboard camera being carried by our leader, Carlos Munoz, at the Freedom 100 as we have uh, soon to be 29 of 40 laps complete, along with uh, Joseph Newgard, who will start 25th in Sunny City Annapolis 500 and 12-time Indy 500 veteran Davey Hamilton, I'm Mike King. On a gorgeous day at the Speedway, Zach Beach gonna make a bid for fourth. Zach is in that purple and green car on the outside. Too wide is not always a good idea, but get it done here in these cars. You can get it done here, Mike. And one thing with this racetrack, years ago, they grooved it. They, they ground the track down to make it have just a little more grip. It's kind of wore out in the groove, but if you step out of that groove, that grinding is still there, so there is grip out there. But that's early in the race. If you start getting marbles and some debris up there, it gets slick, and that's where Joseph and in the Indy car, it's not as easy up there as it is in these cars. He did pull off the pass, but he did give it a run. But look how much uh, space they lost between the first three guys. Yeah, Peter Dempsey is not in interested in giving up the position. Meantime, as the battle up front wages between our leader, Carlos Munoz, and our pole winner, Sage Karam. Gabby Chavez is in that white car with the red accents, the yellow in the rear wing, running third. By the way, Joseph, as you finish 16th in the final practice in the Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing Century 21 car and you start 25th, we don't want to put any pressure on you, but our last two analysts for this race have done us proud by going to victory lane. The late great Dan Weldon did it in 2011. Of course, Dario was with us one year ago, so it's it's on you, pal, to keep the streak alive. You had to bring it up. Well, if it's on me, then you know what? I'm looking to deliver. Hopefully it brings me a little bit of luck on Sunday. If there's too much pressure, I'll just take your place. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it would be it would be an incredible streak. And, and as I mentioned to you, David, Tony Kanaan was asking if maybe he could come by the boat. So he wanted your spot. This, is, this definitely was a high-valued seat for this year. I guarantee you if I do it, then everyone's oh. going to be clawing to get up here. Yeah, Brian, Brian Anakin, our producer, will be the most popular guy in, on the entire pit lane. Everyone's going to yeah. want to buy him dinner. Let's hang out. <laughs> well, we watch Sage Karam as he continues to draft the 26 car of Munoz. And guys, it, it's hard to know at this point who has the faster race car. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm looking at Chavez, and there's a reason for it. I raced Chavez back in 2007 in Skip Barber for a full season, and he is one of the smartest drivers I have ever seen in a drafting situation. He knows exactly what's going on. He could pass these guys at any point, but he doesn't need to. He's been riding in third the whole time. I think he might be in the catbird seat at this point. Only 19 years old, a rookie from Bogota, Colombia. Having a pretty good run up to this point in the championship as he has fourth in points, back-to-back -back podiums at Barber and Long Beach. And Davey, he's just been kind of lurking back there. Just lurking. I mean, those two front guys get so close to each other. As you can see, Karim right now pulling up on Carlos, almost touching. But uh, as you say, in that third-place car, he is, he's... Uh, Chavez is just kind of riding right there. He may have enough. To, matter of fact, if the two leaders start fighting here at the end to get some side by side, they may have to do a lift. You get, you know, and, and slow down a little bit, not to hit each other, and that could be the door for Chavez as well. Yep. Okay. So uh, Jimmy Simpson, as uh, we we talked about the, the situation with him as he spun before the start of this race right now, running in the 22 car, and right now Simpson is running seventh. This is the Purdue sophomore. This is the pace lap, guys, as he was warming up his tires. And it just hooked on him there, just down there in one. A little throttle and uh, going slow like that, a little tire spin, and around it comes. Well, he's plus four in his first ever Firestone Indy Lights event. What bigger stage to make a debut, huh, than the Speedway, Joseph? You know what? It might have helped him, to be honest with you. You get it out of the way early, and then it actually probably made him a little more cautious at the start, which has helped him. You know, patience in this race definitely pays off. And for, for one time out, never driven an Indy Lights car, never really driven much of the Mazda in the Indy, he's doing a great job. Well, the, the 22, as we mentioned, that is Simpson. And right behind him, surprisingly, even though you can see the bend, there on the right front suspension of that car is Chase Austin, who Davey continues to soldier on right now as he is running in eighth place and still running pretty strong. Pretty impressive, because you can visually see on your monitors that how bent that right front suspension Look is. Look at that. Which I mean, means the camber's not right, your toe's not right, and so it's definitely more of a handful than what it should be, but he's hanging in there doing a pretty good job. And and actually fighting Simpson, Joseph, for the spot, so he's not left the uh, the, the boogered-up suspension bother him, uh, bother him at all. I'm surprised. You know, it's definitely going to hurt the handling of the car it's difficult to deal with but chase is doing a great job with the thing chase austin here from eudora kansas as uh, he races for the second time here at the indianapolis motor speedway in the freedom 100 as now guys laps begin to wind down we're working lap 35 so joseph and and here comes chase to the outside he's going to make a bid to, to get past simpson this is for position this would be for seventh place a good battle back in the pack he's not letting the suspension slow <laughs> down at all and the car seems fine almost when you when you look at it. That's and, and David, generally you see a kink in the suspension. That automatically means you're, you're done. Well, and the good thing is he probably doesn't see that. From the angle that we sit in the car, you really can't see that suspension. We can just see the top of the tire. So he brushed the wall. He shook it off a little bit. See nothing was broken. Went for it. So he has no idea probably. That that's and let's not forget about Juan Pablo Garcia back there in the two car. He's watching these guys fight it out. I think he's looking for an opportunity as well. Yeah, there's fights all over the racetrack, which makes it cool. So the team more guys uh, right now as, uh, let's see, Simpson runs seventh and Garcia runs ninth and Chase Austin, he's going to try it again going into three, but back up front, guys with laps winding down, less than four to go now as they make their way through turn number one. This has been an outstanding race from the start up front between Munoz and our pole sitter, Sage Kara. If, if somebody disappeared on that top five, Zach Beach, he was the fifth car in that run. In that run and he is now he is nowhere to be way found. Back. He's by himself in fifth place. Really no opportunity at this point to, uh, to pull off the victory. Well, and you know, we saw Beach brush the wall earlier during a break, so he might be struggling with a little bit of an issue himself. Yeah, and, and you talked about tires going away a bit. If, in fact... He brushed, he brushed the wall and is, is struggling with the tires late in the race. Could be a double whammy. It is a double negative. It's very, very difficult around this place. They've gone green for quite a long time, so maybe the tires are running off. But I'll tell you what, these guys up front, they've been pretty consistent up to this point. Well, 37 laps are complete, three to go. This one's still a long way from being decided. And while the red cars up in front of Munoz and Karam battle it out, Guys, you continue to think that Gabby Chavez in the white car they're running third may, may still have a shot at this thing. 
Well, he's falling back slightly, but that doesn't mean anything. That's slight, and he can make that up in this one straightaway. It's just those first two cars are so close and so competitive. I think Karam has the strongest car out there, but being stronger than the car in front of you, get by him two different things. This is a tough group, and, and you know what? I was talking about Chavez, but equally so, Karam is one of the best oval drivers I have ever seen in the junior ranks. He has kicked a lot of butt inside the Pro Mazda cars. He's very, very stout and oval. He's a very smart driver, so it's going to be tough. Munoz, he's been so dominant. He's so good, and Karam's very smart in the ovals. And then you got Chavez, who's a thinker as well. This could be very interesting at the end. Two to go as the leaders go into turn number one. And you talk about Karam. He was third at Star Mazda in the championship in 2012. He had three wins, and right now looking for the biggest of his career. But for Carlos Munoz, Munoz, Davey, would love to run the win streak to three in, in the Firestone Indy Lights. Well, he's going to have to work for it. I mean, he's done a great job. He got the lead. He's, he's paced this field, Mike. But it, when it comes down to this white flag, who knows? He's not, he, he's not just going to sit behind him, I'll assure you. This nope. is the shuffle that you're seeing now, too, that what's going to happen, and you can't count out Peter Dempsey to put him in fourth. He yeah. could be a guy as well to win this thing. Yeah. Okay, white flag. This time, Chavez is going to pop to the outside, guys. What will be the strategy is Peter Dempsey in the red and white car will watch. Here comes Chavez on the outside. He's going to wait. It looked like he was going to try and make it too wide, which would have put Karam in a tough position, but now he ducks back. And we'll go on to the back stretch in a second. Carlos Munoz in the 26th. Dial is sir. Entry out in front. Took over the lead on lap 14. Has led the last 25 laps. Here we go. Side there by go. side. Hit the three. Here's the move for Karam. So here's Sage Karam. Now Chavez going to make it three wide to the outside, guys. Well, this is tight. Oh, baby. <laughs> this is what people look Through for. Three. Oh, Karam and Munoz nearly touch. <laughs> on the outside of four. Remaining three wide. Gabby Chavez. Oh We're going to have a three wide shootout at the line. It's a drag race. Who's at the got end the end momentum? Here look comes Dempsey. Dempsey putting a four wide. It's going to be. Oh, oh, Dempsey won it. Oh, Dempsey oh, won it. That what was a, a four wide finish in Indy Lights. Unbelievable. That is the craziest finish in history. Oh. Thing, I think. Oh, my that's got to be the best finish ever at IMF. Four wide at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it's Peter Dempsey, the Irishman, who gets his first Firestone Indy Lights win by going to the outside four wide about and winning it by, oh my gosh. Unreal. Oh, let's watch it again. That's incredible. Got to be the greatest finish in the history of this speedway as Dempsey, oh, oh maybe by that, maybe by four inches. That looks staged, Oh, Mike. Look how staged that picture looks. That's, that's an actual race run to oh, the finish. Oh, my word. 26 thousandths of a second, the difference at the line as it is Dempsey who wins it. Chavez winds up second. Karam third and Munoz who was the lead 26 10 thousandths and people could not hear the reaction it's unbelievable point zero zero two six as guys <laughs> it will not get better than how that. could you make it better it will not get better than that Boy, Peter Dempsey we've talked we've about, talked the, about the, him, this yeah. kid this guy maturing what an unbelievable drive now by Peter Dempsey. And I'll tell you what, the guy deserves it. Unbelievable. Oh, look at Munoz here's here. Mazda Road to Indy. Camera here. Watch this finish. Dempsey running fourth at this point. Doesn't look like now he's this, got a prayer. This is, going into one. this is the final lap yeah. of the race. But Dempsey is look at him, 10 right car lengths back. back. And what did we talk about? We talked about the thinking game. That's what these guys could have passed at any point, but they didn't need to. They were thinking about the finish. Oh, uh, and here he is. Here we are through turn number two. This is the final lap of the Freedom 100. And here's where Karen makes the move to the outside and where the fun begins, guys. And look, at he had such a run, but look at Chavez. He has a run as well. Sneaks in that third group, and he's staying with it, boy. Okay, now at this point, I'm thinking, guys, be careful. Guys, be careful. And it looked like Karen and Munoz may have made light contact right off oh, oh, but, no. they, but they didn't they, 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 they did. came oh so close and then here's the run down the front straight where did dempsey come from all the way on the outside dempsey timed it perfect he couldn't have done it better <laughs> oh that was unbelievable that was so cool you know what? I, that may be the closest ever race i know logan Gomez oh yeah oh 26 and, and chicago oh. had the, the oh. world record i think for the closest race at one point but that's uh i, I i've got a I've got to find out what the spread is between the top four. Yeah, that's because nothing. the spread between the top four is going to be somewhere probably in, in the thousands of seconds as well. As this crowd, guys, you know, in our booth, very rarely can you hear the crowd 
inside the booth when you're wearing the headsets and you're hearing the broadcast, the place exploded with that move. And people didn't get to oh. hear that at home, but this place lit Went up. nuts. And you know what else is cool? If you're going to win the Freedom 100, that's the way to win. That is the coolest <laughs> way you could win it. <laughs> yeah. You can't win it in a better fashion. Oh, now. Joseph, does this change everything for Peter Dempsey? Because he was Mr. Hard Luck, it seemed like, up to this point. This is his race of his career right here. Unbelievable. Oh. He's Mr. Hard Luck. He's never had the brakes. He's never had the consistency of cars. You know, Bellardi Autosport, what a tip to them. They've really put him in the car. They oh, believed in him, and they put him out here, and they've kept him in it. Unbelievable job by him. Here's the finish in slow-mo. Guys, look at this. <laughs> it looked like Chavez had it at this point. It did. And, and Dempsey, I mean... That's, that's that's literally by the nose. That's unbelievable. The amount, the, the nose, the, the width of, of the nose between the front of the front wing to the tip of the car was the difference in this race. And by the way, that's only lap he led. Oh, he yeah. led four inches this race. And yeah. Be the right that's, that's right. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, 26 ten thousandths of a second. Wade Cunningham beat J.R. Hildebrand by a tenth of a second uh, here. And, and uh, Jaime Camara beat... Uh, Cunningham by 1300s. Man, that looks like those those finishes look like runaways compared to <laughs> this. To this. Jay so Query, what a race we just saw unfold here. I can't speak for Cannonball Baker or any of the races that took place in the first decade of this great facility, but under a green flag, Peter Dempsey had to have just won the closest finish in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in any form of motorsports that have taken place here. The young man from Ireland, and you talked about it, what a circuitous route it took to get to this point. He has waited at different points, wondering if a ride would come about. Finally, he got a lifeline in his career from Brian Bellardi at the end of last year and knew this year was the year he would have a full-time ride, and now he has a Freedom 100 and a win at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway under his belt. Peter Dempsey is about to get out of the car and welcome himself as the fans acknowledge him to Victory Circle at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. What a moment for him, and we'll move in to get a word with this young man in an incredible, breathtaking finish. Peter Dempsey, young man, congratulations. Welcome to Victory Lane at Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, I'm lost for words there. I was confident from the test, you know, we really had a fantastic car here to test. We ran in no traffic this week, and uh, my voice is even gone. I was in bits in the car, but I owe my team, uh, Blardy Auto Racing, everyone involved from Elliot, the truck driver, Doom, who polishes our beautiful chrome wheels, to my two mechanics, Mikey, Chad, Ross, the gearbox guy, Tommy, Jill, and credentials, and, you know, i got to thank my sponsors too, Stick Lock, uh, Liberty Engineering, OMP, Bell, and even had some help this weekend from btindy.com and also my girlfriend's grandparents who did a set of tires, so, uh, what a finish, though, I mean, that's what the fans come out to see is, is close finishes, and, uh, we take a look at it now. Now, here's what's interesting. You've always been knocked as impatient. You were patient until the right moment. Oh, I'm not going to complain. The beers are on me tonight. Yeah. That's awesome finish, you know. Uh, that's what the fans want to see. And to see a four-way finish, you know, it's a perfect way to finish the Indy Lights race here at Indianapolis. And... Uh, you know, get the fans on our side, get some more support, get some more cars in the field. Now, be honest, was that a strategy, or did you simply see a seam and think, you know what, I've got to go for it? Um, Stephen Wilson was my spotter, and he said, be patient, they're going to spread out into the last, uh, coming out of three and four, and we were out of gear the whole race. I was just sitting there, and it was the loosest car I've ever had to drive in my life, and we were drifting around the corners, but when they pulled out wide, I could feel the soak up, and I just hoped that I didn't hit the limiter too hard in six, and uh, we got to buy a whisker, so happy days. I'll call that the skill of the Irish. Yeah, the look of the Irish, the skill of the Irish, but uh, it's definitely with me today. I'll be lucky boxers on as well, so hopefully that made a difference. Celebrate. Thank you very much. Peter Dempsey has won the Freedom 100 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In his 20th career start in Firestone Indy Lights, Peter Dempsey has won the biggest race of his life, and he has done it in the most dramatic of fashions. Here's what it looked like in the booth as... <laughs> they came across the line. <laughs> Joseph, you liked what you said. It was unbelievable, man. I couldn't believe what was happening. It was simply amazing to watch. We can only hope what this bodes for Sunday. As Peter Dempsey, the 26-year-old from Ashburn, Ireland, celebrates in victory lane at Hindu.
The best finish in the history of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Four wide to end the Freedom 100, and it's the man from Ireland on the outside in the five car who wins it. The four cars separated by 44,000 to Davey Hamilton. A friend of yours liked the way this one finished out. Well, one of the best drivers ever to sit behind the steering wheel, Tony Stewart, just texted me saying, how about that? No blocking, just spectacular driving, and that's exactly what it was. One of it's the best races he says he's ever seen here. Incredible. Kevin Lee? They've got second and third here. They've just watched it. This is Gabby Chavez. This is Sage Karam. Uh, you made it three wide for the last lap. It looked like the parade lap, but at 190 miles an hour, what are you thinking as you see that for the first time? Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm happy, but I feel like crying right now. If, if only the start, the finish line was, you know, a couple feet uh, back, uh, this would have been my race. But, you know, I played it out as well as I could. I did everything I could until the last moment. And, you know, maybe not my year, but hopefully uh, another year in the future will be mine. Let's watch it again, and I'm going to let the two of you, Sage, you jump in here, and you guys just uh, tell me what you're seeing and what you're thinking as, it, as it's all happening. You were a second going in the last lap, Sage. Yeah, I mean, uh, the whole race, I just put myself in position to win it, and I was going to make the move uh, going to turn three. Uh, you know, just just was on his attenuator the whole whole race, and that was my plan from uh, from yesterday. I couldn't even sleep last night. There's so many scenarios that can go through your mind to, for this race, and that's what I came up with, and that's what I wanted to do, and we did it, and... I popped high and just just couldn't hold it. I, I, I just couldn't get the, enough momentum. And then he came, uh, Gabby came on the outside, and whoever's got the higher line coming out of four is going to be able to use that banking more. And, you know, he just n nicked us at the line there. So, I mean, yeah, I'm a great race. I'm a great finish. It was such a tr strategical race. It was, a, it was a lottery pretty much. Gabby, unbelievably clean racing. I don't know if we've ever seen a four-wide finish on an oval in Indy-type cars. You obviously had a lot of trust in these guys around you. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, these guys that we're racing, you know, they're they're the best of the best. You know, we might not have the biggest field, but we definitely have a very, very competitive and talented one. So I think I'm going to not be able to sleep for a couple nights until, you know, I can just let it go and focus on, move on to the next one. But I'm very happy. I'm so glad, you know, the Schmidt-Peterson guys gave me such a great car. I was just sitting there waiting for my moment, and, uh, you know, I did everything I could. I'm just going to look forward to the next race and try to win that one. Great show, guys. Congratulations. I know they're frustrated and disappointed right now, but they're going to look back and have been a part of one of the greatest oval races we've ever seen. Absolutely, Kevin. And hats off to all four of those drivers, Dempsey, Chavez, Karam, and Munoz. And interestingly enough, it winds up the second closest finish in Firestone Indy Lights history. Logan Gomez won a race by five ten thousandths in 2007. There are your results. Peter Dempsey, the man from Ireland, the luck of the Irish today, as Jake said, combined with the skill of the Irish, gives him Firestone Indy Lights race number one, his first ever victory. Gabby Chavez, the rookie, winds up second. Another rookie, our pole sitter, Sage Karam, third. Carlos Munoz, who looked like was going to, to win this thing, led the last 25 laps and all but four inches. As he winds up fourth, this is the way we saw it from the booth as they crossed in front of us. Oh, we can only hope the rest of this weekend is as good. Our thanks to Joseph Newgarden. Pit stop competition on its way as we roll on with live coverage of Carb Day from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the NBC Sports Network. We are live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on Carb Day. Two of the three events in the books. We got the Pit Stop Challenge coming up and the Firestone Freedom 100. Uh, that was pretty boring, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> My gosh, have you ever seen anything like this? The guy way back there in fourth came up. I think he was sitting really waiting for the crash to happen. <laughs> <laughs> <could> really, <laughs> but... <clears throat> Well, when these guys started to get two and then three wide, it opened up such a hole for him to pick up such a draft. He had, he had a great run, and he had some space on the outside to make it work. And Carlos Munoz is doing, I mean, you lead all that time, you stay low, and you say, well, there shouldn't be as grip, as much grip on the high side. I thought, well, if you're way outside the gray, you're going to be in trouble, but he wasn't. Chavez way out in the gray by the wall. That's Karam in the middle and Munoz on the inside. Looks like it's going to be a three-way battle to the checkered flag. And here comes Peter Dempsey. Where did he come from? He goes to the high side of the racetrack. 
And had I been on the Pierre radio, I would have said, perhaps the closest one, two, three, four finish yeah. in the history. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> I, uh, for sure. <laughs> Well, congratulations to everybody. Those those guys really put on a show, show their professionalism, and it, you just can't get any better than that. That was one of the best races I've seen in a long, long time. But it wasn't uh, anything unusual because Cunningham and Hildebrand raced to a .1046 margin, and Jaime Camara beat Cunningham, point, point, one, three, one, nine seconds here at the Freedom 100. Wow. Okay, as we indicated, we have the Pit Stop Challenge coming up. It's head-to-head -head competition. There are four entrants that get buys to the quarterfinals. The highest speed picks the lane, the green flag will start the competition, and the fastest car to change all four tires and simulate a fuel hookup will be the winner. And here are the brackets. The first two will be Dario Franchini and James Henchcliffe. Then Takuma Sato and Ryan Briscoe, Kimball, Kanan, Serbia, and Andretti. The buys were Will Power, Ryan hunter Ray, Elio Castroneves, and Scott Dixon. Those two will see competition in round number two. All right, let's get out of Marty Snyder. Oh, this is the fun part of... Uh, of, of Carb Day here, all the fans over there cheering. Dario's making fun of me behind camera, and this is what the drivers are going to watch. They're going to watch this light right here, five stages of red, and then after one second, it will go to green, and then that's when they can launch into their pit stall, and you wait for it to go green here in one second. There's the five stages, it'll go green, and then they come in here, they do their pit stop, they get to the end of the uh, pit stall, and that's where the time clock ends. Now you can look at the penalties and what might happen. The bottom line, this is a drag race, but you have to be efficient on pit road. Everybody on pit road telling me that you need to be clean on your stop not focus on being fast but be clean because you don't want one of those penalties any one of those penalties and bottom line your pit stop is sunk the drivers are excited the crews are certainly excited and i know one driver that's excited is with kevin lee kevin james hinchcliffe is going to be first up going against dario franchiti this is where you will start i know it's just how quick they change the tires but i think you're going to have a hard time getting there quickly uh, in this, I will, yes. Yes, no, but uh, in the IndyCar, too, I mean, tires are going to be cold, brakes are cold. This is always an interesting challenge, and I actually went against Dario a couple years ago and lost in the first round, so sweet, sweet redemption is coming. You stopped me as we were walking through because I've got the handy-dandy portable monitor. You heard about the end of the lights race. Now you've seen it. What did you think? Dude, it was so awesome. We should all just race Indy Lights cars because that race was out of control. Fourth out of turn four, and he wins the race. Huge congrats to Peter Dempsey. That was impressive. All right, you've got the momentum coming into the 500. You won the last race. You've won two now so far. But today is about everybody else, right? It's about all the guys. Exactly right. I mean, this is such a cool thing for the boys, and uh, it's a huge point of pride, you know. there's The three crew won it for like 10 years in a row or something, and, uh, and we got some quick guys on our on our team. So fingers crossed the Gaudi boys come out on top because they, they deserve it. All the Andretti guys have been quick on track. We'll see how they are on pit lane here today. That's James Hinchcliffe. He'll be in the GoDaddy car in a few minutes. There's a lot of money at stake in this, but there's also, of course, a lot of bragging rights. $50,000 to the winner. Second place gets 15, third, 7,000. Fifth place, 3250, and ninth place through 12th gets $2,000. You know, it's gonna be hard to come off of that race and be, <laughs> and be calm. Joseph Newgarden, when he left the booth here, said, boy, that puts pressure on us Sunday to do as great a job, and he's gonna be hard to top, top that. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. I mean, to come four wide in a racetrack, yeah. but yep. to here to do it in Indianapolis, that's, that was pretty neat. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Wally Donovac and Jan Bikas. Good to have you with us. Lee, of course, is in Monaco. This is a one-off for me, but glad to do it. So now we turn our attention to the pit, uh, pit stop challenge, and it's all up to the pit crew and what an opportunity for them to show what they can. Well, I think you said it best. It's just bragging rights for these guys. This is their time in the sun. This is where they shine. And they take a lot of pride in what they do. These guys work very, very hard um, on their pit stops. And it's so competitive now that any mistake could cost you a race. So this is a big day for the teams. And I think it's a chance, Wally, to gain momentum. If you think about how long it took the Ganassi team to win, it took them 35 years. They finally won last year, then won the 500. So I think it's a way of getting people pumped up, trying to build momentum, and that's a great way to start if you can win the pit stop competition. 
Team Penske has been good in this competition over the years, but we're very close now to getting the first round underway. Target Chip Ganassi racing with Dario Franchitti, the left front, Wayne Westplate. The right front, Kevin O'Donnell, we just met. Left rear, Jamie Coates. Right rear, Troy Sheeler. Air Jack, Dave Pena, and Fueler, Robbie Page. And now the other team, James Hinchcliffe, making final commands to him and adjustments. And here are the men at his team. Neil Campbell is on the left front, Dave Sharpley in the right front, Lynn Gauchy in left, rear, right rear is Tom Vignier, Ironjack, Craig McCain, and Fueller is Mike Miller. Hinch is shaking the head, he's got the thumbs up, he's ready to go, so are we. The crowd, as usual, is pumped up for this competition on pit lane here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, let's get down to Marty Snyder. He's going to call this first race of the afternoon in the Pit Stop Challenge. Tell you what, Bob, it's always fun. The atmosphere just electric with the fans kind of going crazy. The drivers again looking for that, uh, if you will, almost drag racing staging light. Five stages of red, and then it goes one second later to a green. And of course, James Hinchcliffe and Dario Franchitti were getting explicit instructions down here from IndyCar officials. Now, how soon does it go green? There is a timing instrument right in front of where the car sits right now. So if they jump that green in any way, they do get a penalty. We showed you those penalties moments ago. Both cars fired up at full rev, and there goes Dario. We've got a little bit of a jump on Hinch here, and they'll pull into their stall. Remember, the crew member's telling us, we kind of want to go slow here. Don't go too fast, or you'll mess things up. Looks like Hinch plus team actually has a little bit of lead. Trouble in the right rear for Hinch and Dario Franchini will win this first race of the day in the pit stop competition. Dario with a 13-393 Hinchcliffe, a little bit slower than that. 14-427. And as you can see on the right, under the box there, Franchitti was first out of the box. So Dario gonna move on to face Will Power next. Here's a replay. Dario obviously getting a much better light, if you want to use drag racing terms. Gave his team a little bit of a head start right from the get-go. Actually looked like a fairly clean stop for the Hinch guys. I mean... All right, down to Kevin. And the well, Dario Franchitti gets it off to a good start here. I know it's about the guys, but you're still the pilot, and you got a good launch. Yeah, it's up to us not to screw it up there. <laughs> got a good launch. It's changed that a little bit this year, obviously, with the kind of the drag racing format of having to go. Um, and that, uh, oh, man, my voice just came on the PA. And, yeah, that, that, that was a new bit to it, but I didn't screw it up too badly. Didn't miss the marks by too much. And, the uh, yeah, the guys did a great job there. And, uh, well, I think it'll get more difficult as we go along, but that was a good start. Yeah, we're bringing the crowd into it today, so you guys can talk to the fans. Say hello to everybody. This could be a four-time winner by the time we get to Sunday. First things first, you want to win this. Yeah, we want to win the, uh, the pit stop competition here on Carb Day. But uh, as usual, great crowd here on Carb Day. Hi, everybody, and I uh, hope you guys have a great party. <laughs> there you go. They're all saying hi back. That's Dario Franchitti. His Chip Ganassi teammate, Scott Dixon, won this thing last year. Coming up in the second heat of round number one. Round number one, Takuma Sato and Ryan Briscoe. That coming up when we return to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Ryan had a problem very, very late in the practice session earlier today that went from 11 to 12. There was a fire in the back end of that car just as the checkered flag was coming out. We'll try to find out what the problem was there when he's finished with this round. Engines have been started. You'll see the Honda engineers, in this case, holding the hand up until they get the, the heat they want before they turn them loose.
everybody getting staged for the showdown here. Crews getting ready. Drivers ready. Sato, Frisco ready to go. Well, looks like the Honda engineer, as you, you spoke of, doesn't like something, huh? They are allowed to use any engine that they choose. They do not have to use a race engine, so a lot of the engines they're using are ones that have already been mileaged out. They don't want to take a chance on a 500 engine in this case, but appears to be, at the moment, a slight issue for Sato. The guy with the green flag standing there in the middle of pit lane is Paul Blevin, who will flag the Indianapolis 500 on Sunday. He's the guy that will give them the green flag here in just a moment and get this heat underway. Kevin, we'll send it down to you as hopefully there will be some movement from Sato's car here in a moment. Takuma Sato is on the outside. I'm down at the other end where they'll finish, so I, I don't know I specifically what the issue is. Robin, what do you know? Well, it's interesting because the computer is running everything, and the guy just shut it down again because it won't turn over. And he didn't like the way it sounded just in a couple just a couple revolutions. So all the lights are blinking in the cockpit. It, and <laughs> I just think about A.J. Foyt's car being started by a computer. Just think about that for a minute, will you? <laughs> Something doesn't make sense there, uh, Robert. I'd like to see A.J. come here and knock a few people out of the way like bowling balls and go, let me get in there. <laughs> so if you lose an engine in the pit stop competition, is that still a 10 grid spot penalty the next <laughs> no, race? No, no, no. Okay, no, good. They clarified that last week because good. that was a question that came up. It is, uh, they are using engines that have already mileaged out, so it won't be a penalty. Former winners of this event last year, Scott Dixon, year before that, Ryan Briscoe, then Elio Castro Nevis won in both 2010 and 2009. This has pretty much, pretty much been a Penske show here at the Pit Stop Challenge. And you know, as I was looking over the history of this event, back in 1977, the very first one they held, was driven, and the winner was uh, Jim McElreath, and he defeated a guy named Raleigh Dollar. Mm. Oh, what's the time? What were the times at? 15.09 seconds. Okay, it's going to be a one-man show, I guess, huh? Yeah, that's the way they, they time it. They don't have to leave at the same time, so it's not who gets to the line first. It's how quick you get to that timing line, and then how quick you get to the second timing line. The simulated tire change, the actually real tire change, the simulated fuel stop, and this is going to be a little bit slower than Dario Franchitti, who won the first round. Now, it's worth saying, Kevin, this does mean something because you get lane choice based on your speed. So, therefore, they really wanted to try and get a good time on the books. Ryan Briscoe moves to round number two. Next up in the 2013 IndyCar Pit Stop Challenge, it'll be Charlie Kimball against Tony Kanaan. Stay with us for more here at the Speedway. Sunday morning, the Formula One World Championships arrive for the first time on NBC. It's the most prestigious day on the Formula One calendar. Don't miss the Monaco Grand Prix Sunday morning at 7.30 Eastern on NBC. I normally don't get up that early, but I will <laughs> Sunday. make an exception, <laughs> right? Yeah. boy. All right. Takuma Sato was uh, unable to start. Briscoe moves to round number two. When you see those buys there, by the way, anyone who has a buy means they've won. They've been the fastest team in races post last year's Indy 500. Party? Mark. Well, Ryan Briscoe, that's going to be the uh, easiest competition you win all weekend long, but it was important to lay down the time, wasn't it? It was. I mean, the time counts uh, moving forward. I think we were four tenths behind the 10 car guys, so not bad. Um, we'll take it and uh, move on to the next round. Let's talk about what happened this morning at the very end of that final practice. What was going on? Uh, yeah, you know, we're coming to the checkers, and it looks like uh, the engine let go. So um, anyway, on the bright side, better in the last lap of final practice than the first lap of the race. So we'll take it. We'll put a we'll put a fresh one in, but um, definitely looks like we, we had good speed this morning, uh, and all the Hondas were looking really strong. So we're definitely excited about Sunday. By the way, I know you're enjoying the party atmosphere. These guys are enjoying it, aren't they? It's awesome. Drink up and uh, have fun today. Thanks, guys. All right, all the fans cheering on Ryan Briscoe. All right, coming up, Charlie Kimball against Tony Kanaan. Tony Kanaan earlier today 
meeting and giving a big hug to his buddy Alex Zanardi who of course was with us in the booth during the final practice period. Tony Kanaan will start 12th on race day. Will this be his dream year and he sees his dream finally come true? For me, what will be the best will be to finally get the 500 win that I've been looking for. If, if I never win that race, it's not going to be something that I'm going to be frustrated for the rest of my life. I understand what it takes to win. I've been putting myself in a contention every year I was there. And somebody said the other day that uh, I'm more famous in India for not winning the 500 than actually, you know, for some guys that won the 500. So it doesn't bug me, but I think about it. Obviously, I already have a championship in my pocket. If I could, and if I can, and if everything works in my favor and I win that race, I'll be extremely happy and will be fulfilled for sure. for the next round from Andretti Autosport. Left front, Mark Sampson. Josh Jung doing the right front. Left rear, Kyle Clark. Brad Wright working the right rear. On the air jack, Pat Nelson. The Bueller, Phil Davis for Charlie Kimball. KB Racing, Tony Kahn. Left front, Chris Badger. Right front, Jeff Simon. Tim White working the left rear. Kyle Sagan, right rear. The Air Jack, Brent Knotsman. And the Bueller is Brad Ward. Give it up for Tony Kanan's team. All right. Everybody having a good time. This is round number one. The Tony Kanaan has never won this race. Neither, of course, is Charlie Kimball. Right now, we're looking for the fastest to advance to round number two. All right, the engines are started. Marty, pace begins to quicken. Just love seeing that scene with all the fans around the pit stop competition, Bob. You know, it's funny, I talked to Mitch Davis, the team manager for Charlie Kimball earlier today, and he said, we would have loved to have practiced this week. But this is our primary car for Detroit. It just has Speedway wings on it. So we've had to work all week long, actually, on this car, getting it ready for Detroit. They brought it here for the pit stop competition today. And, uh, of course, they would love to knock off Tony Kanaan and his team. Drivers waiting for that green light so they can go and leave the staging area and get into their pit stalls as soon as they can. And there they go. Kimball with a nice little jump there over Tony Kanaan. But he hits the brakes a little bit earlier than TK, so they kind of arrive in the stall at the same time. This is going to be a very close competition. TK's team doing a very good job. He drops the jacket. Tony Kanaan will recover from that start and win. Nice popular win here at Indy, Bob. Yeah, 14.188. Good job for Tony Kanaan. Of course, they'll have to check to see if there are any penalties. But if there is no penalty, then he will advance to another round. He is an incredibly popular driver here at the Speedway, but it was so great to hear the crowd respond when he took the lead in Brazil. Here's a replay. And Charlie Kimball actually got there first, and it was the left front for Charlie Kimball that unfortunately slowed him. They they were right. Now watch, that's a double. That was very nice. When I saw that one live, it looked like it was a little bit of a double bump on the right front, but it wasn't. Very nice. And wow, look at this. Look at the pieces of metal flying. It's like, I don't care how many pieces of metal. That nut's going on there. Thank you. Congratulations to Tony Kevin, let's talk to TK. All right, you survived round number one. That's good for everybody. That's a good omen for race day. Your crew is tuned in. Yeah, yeah, they did well, obviously. Uh, it's so hard here, Kevin. We, uh, you know, the, the difference between the two lanes, because for people that are home that don't understand, this is the, you know, the rollout that's 60 miles an hour. Over there is a pit box. And the guy that had the fastest split over the years get to pick the lane. So, obviously, Charlie picked that lane, has more grip. He has a jump. Now that they changed the rules, you're starting right back there. So, uh, it's going to be tough. I think Elio has the preference on that. So, we're just going to have to be better on the pit stop. We talked uh, to you in Sao Paulo about all your fans there. Uh, the, the ovation when you were on the speaker here just a moment ago. This is this is something you got to live for. There are going to be a lot of happy people if you have a good day on Sunday. I mean, I love this place, and uh, you know, I can't thank the fans enough for uh, for the support that I get. So uh, 
hopefully I'll give them the win that they want so bad. I think I want to win more for you guys than actually for me. So uh, if we do that, we'll break the grandstands. They're going to have to repair for sure. <laughs> as popular as we've seen here in a long time, listen to the crowd. There's Tony Kanaan, Marty. And Charlie Campbell, had a, you thought you had the jump and everything. What happened at the end of the day? I was a little long in the box. The, the Novo Nordisk guys did a good job. I just I slid a little long. It's, it's the first time I've done it uh, as far as pit stop competition on carb day. And, you know, it's great. Here in front of the fans at, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is pretty awesome. How's your car for the 500? I feel really good. I was uh, really confident in practice this morning. We could run close to people, and Honda definitely brought their A game for race weekend. So I think we'll be in good shape. All right, Charlie Kimball loses out in the pit stop competition, but plenty more to come from this afternoon as we have some good battles coming up next up. Oriole Servia, and many people think Marco Andretti, the guy to beat for the 500. Well, the drivers are ready. There's Oriole Servia. Marco Andretti's team gets in position, and the engines have been started. Down to you. Oriol Servia has the preferred inside lane. He was the runner-up, losing to Scott Dixon in the finals last year. They've already said that they don't have the funding to move forward after the 500, so 50,000 would help. I do think, though, that a great finish in the 500 might attract some interest, and they might continue on. They're already set for next year's 500. Marco, a heavy favorite this year in the race. What can he do here with the crew in the pit stop competition? The timing will start like a drag race. The line after they release. Well, Marco's got a problem. Andretti's he's got an issue with the car, and he's not going, and there goes Servia. So Servia will go alone. Wow. He'll get in the box, make the change, the simulated fuel. Good smooth stop for Oriol Servia. He's away. He hits the cone. 13-7 for Oriol Servia, and no launch for Marco Andretti. Here he is. Here he is. And again, it's not when they... They don't have to leave at the same time. It's just the combined time so we'll see what Marco can come up with here. Nah, he's got he's got trouble oh, getting sorry, in yeah, here. The clock does now start with screen, so Marco yeah is just getting some practice here. Wow well problems for Marco Andretti better in this than in the race. Oriol Servi, though, moves on. He was in the finals last year against Scott Dixon, defeated, and Marco, as you can see, is quite despondent. Hey, you can see right away, he, uh, you can see him grabbing on the, on the, you know, the steering wheel, trying to get the car engaged. Well, that's frustrating. Oriel Servia waving to the fans, and uh, you looked at me like, what happened to Marco? Yeah, I mean, I think we had a pretty good pizza, but it's a shame. I think uh, he's carrying going here, so it's kind of an unfair win, but, uh, you know, feel sorry for him, but we'll take it. Yeah, he'll take any win in Indianapolis, right? But I think your your dance moves are winning the fans over. How about that? Well, you know, we were second last year, and I think the fans remember, and uh, we're hoping to get a win. No, no you got to give us your dance moves, though. After the win. <laughs> After the win, he's going to give us his dance moves. Robin? Well, Will, this is kind of your chance to pay these guys back for the hard work they do all year. And that's a lot of, it's probably more pressure on the drivers and the crew. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, my crew has done a phenomenal job this year, actually, and uh, I feel kind of bad that we've had such bad results. So I um, uh, really hope that I can just get it on the marks. That's all that matters. <laughs> You're going against your rival, Dario Franchi. That's kind of fitting, it sounds like. Yeah, yep. Good old sparring partner, Dario, man. He's always tough. Doesn't matter what you're doing with him. So uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, good luck. Kevin? Marco, what happened? Uh, the car wouldn't go into gear until I got it into emergency mode. It took too long to go into emergency mode, but then it, then it, it worked. Is this the race car? No, no. Okay, so I, that, that would concern me if it was the race car. It's the backup car, so all good for the race. Yeah, it's still a bummer for the guys. I mean, they didn't get a fair shot at it, but, uh, you know, I wish I could have got it in emergency mode faster, but, the, the, of course, the switch was taped down, so I could barely get it up, so uh, we tried. Well, the one that really counts is on Sunday, Marco Andretti. 
Round one is over. Oriole Serbia advances to the quarterfinals over Marco Andretti. So now in the quarterfinals, our first pairing will be Dario Franchitti and Will Power. Who took it from us last year, but it was Scott Dixon who won it last year. You hear the mic of uh, the starter there trying to get everybody going here. As Will Power called Dario Franchitti, his old sparring mate. These guys have battled for championships before. They'll try to knock each other out of the pit stop competition this time around. Once again, that pit lane proving very valuable. Dario Franchitti with a very nice launch. Clean stop so far for both teams. Will Power's team very fast. This is going to be a close to leading pit road. Oh, I believe that was Dario by just a little bit. Winning it, yes, indeed. Look at that time. 12-4-9-3 for Dario Franchitti. Close one, Bob. Wow, that was, that was by far the best we have had so far. Uh, did you see when Power took off? He kind of slid over to the right. I, I, I think that lane, that lane over there does make a difference. Close race. We talk about rivalries. There's one right yeah, no there between kidding. Chip and Roger as far as who's going to win this one. That is right. Here we go with the replays. front was the last tire done it was a little bit slow with the right coming off for Dario but obviously that was lightning fast overall and boy they dropped very close together I'll tell you what look at how much wheel spin though that power car has compared to Frank Eady's car I mean I'm telling you that other lane over there makes a little bit of a difference well we all joke about how much fun this day is but I saw you pound the steering wheel you took that one seriously didn't you Dario yeah, absolutely. You know, the, uh, the, the Penske and Ganassi rivalry is, is legendary, and the Penske guys are always absolutely top-notch on this pit stop competition. I see her with everything, so to, 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 to beat them there was, that meant a lot. Um, it, was a great, uh, it was a great competition to really for the guys to showcase what they do week in, week out, because they are as big a part of winning as any of us. So that was, that was great to see, and um, we'll see what the target boys can do the next round. I think uh, Dixie's boys are, uh, are pretty keen to, to do well as well. This lane is proving quite valuable, isn't it? This pit road lane. Yeah, we were talking about that actually earlier. It would be great if we could do it on the track because then you would have no advantage. We think this lane's definitely an advantage there. So uh, we can stick in this one all day. We'll be quite happy. It proved quite key for Dario. He was able to get that launch out of the pit stall, Bob. That was quite a few years before Chip Ganassi won this competition. Last year, they won it with Scott Dixon. The question is, can they make it two in a row? All right, there's the champ in the yellow car. That's Ryan Hunter Ray, last year's IndyCar champ. And then Ryan Briscoe, who nearly won the championship in 2009. Sixth last year, Hunter this Ray. year. This is his only Hunter race. Go, Look at Hitchcliffe in the middle there trying to race them. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to cheat. Eyes on the starter. <laughs> and they're off. And Briscoe gets out of the box first, and Hitchcliffe is going to give up oh, soon. Briscoe has the early advantage. Smooth for the Ganassi team. They've got a problem on the left rear, and then Hunter Ray is going to win the race to the line. The problem on the left rear for the number eight Ganassi team allows Ryan Hunter Ray, despite a slower launch, to be able to advance to the semifinals. And Hinch running to congratulate his teammate Ryan Hunter Ray. All right, here's the start. Nice launch by Hinchcliffe. No problem on the right rear there, like I said with Frisco. All right, here's what could have happened. Hinchcliffe gets down there, can't stop, falls down, skins himself, breaks a leg, and yeah. can't race on Sunday. <laughs> Ryan Hunter Ray advancing. Here's Marty. I, uh, Ryan Hunter Ray cannot stop laughing because of this character right here, James. Come here. How about your 40 time? Well, it's, uh, I don't think I'm going to get drafted, but, you know, <laughs> Ryan and I, he always tells me, he's like, man, you're such a good competitor that when you're behind me, I drive so much faster trying to stay in front of you. So I'm like, the only way to get him to win is to race him. 
and, uh, and that's what we did, and look what happened. That's a team effort all the way. The Andretti Autosport working hard. He inspired you to the win is what he's saying. That was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm looking over at Briscoe to see how much we're pulling him, and James is taking off in a green suit running next to me. I had no idea that was happening. That was pretty funny. Were you impressed with his launch speed? Oh, totally. And he had he was he was angled as such to be uh, very fast. I mean, you were aerodynamic. Did you run track? Air I'm like 5'8". You think I ran track? I think you ran hurdles or something, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These legs. Oh, these are hurdling legs right here. <laughs> I think you're done for the day running, though, aren't you? I'm out of breath, man. That's hard work. <laughs> All right, Wally, Jan, you're next. Come on down. you got to run in the pit stop competition, too. <laughs> I'm glad you left me out of that. <laughs> All right, coming up next, it'll be Tony Kanaan against Elio Castroneves in the quarterfinals. It's the pit stop challenge from Indianapolis. talking to Tony Kanaan just moments ago, Bob, and he told me, he said, we had a pretty good team, and I don't know if we're as good as the Penske guys are, but he said this lane choice certainly helps us. If you win in the previous round, you get the lane choice. So Tony Kanaan got the lane choice to go on pit road. He said, I think it's worth almost a second to be on pit road. A lot of grip on pit road, not a lot of grip on the outside of lane, outside lane of pit road. You listen to Paul Blevin, here he is. Tells them to get ready to go. They start the red and the green light. Beautiful view from down low as we watch these guys get ready to go here in the pit stop competition. And the nice jump by TK and his group as he gets into pit lane very cleanly. A nice stop for TK, a nice stop for Elio as well. This is going to be a very tight stop between these two crews. Also problems on the left front for Tony Kanaan in the very last second. Problems on the left front for TK, and Elio Castroneves wins the race, Bob. Well, we do have a Penske in the uh, semifinals. Elio Castroneves defeats Tony Kanaan with a 14-178. And Roger's pleased with that. Talking to Tim Sindri. Take a look at the replays and see how things went. TK in the far lane, Elio close by. And Elio definitely arrived on his marks later, so the team has to make up the difference. And they are able to. Uh, if you look at the very top, yes, the hot front for Tony Kanaan is what took just a little bit longer yeah. and delayed him. High fives all around. Elio, he's in the semifinals. And we'll go against the winner of the next battle between Scott Dixon and Oriol Serbia. Kevin. Sean Hanrahan, the outside front. That's a big time win, because that was a that was a tough one. That was, he, he was about a foot and a half, two feet long. And uh, we just kept digging, you know. You just have to keep digging until you're done and hope that you beat the other guy. And, they must have had a bigger problem or something, but we uh, we got out before him, and that's what's important. The three team, Elio's team, has won five times last year. Ganassi got it. This is probably a pretty big goal this year. It is. It's always a big goal. You know, we, we want to get this every year, and uh, we train hard, and the guys, you know, we, we, we have a lot of de dedication to what we're doing, so, and it's really fun out here. We, you know, this is, is a big thing for us, so we really enjoy it. All right, let's hear from one of the crew guys. This is Sean Hanrahan with the three-time champ, Elio Castroneves. Elio applauding his guys when he came in. He kind of bowed down to them because you knew you missed the stall a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, I went too quick, actually, and uh, I missed about two feet. And, guys, these guys are looking for just a small bit, and unfortunately, I went too hot. But uh, these guys are awesome because those are the kind of cir circumstances that you face in the race, and they not even blink. And uh, I'm so glad. And how about these fans? Hey, guys, you guys are awesome. Let me tell you, this is awesome. That's exactly what we need here. And I'm so thankful Indianapolis is always the way it is. I think these guys would like to see you climb the fence again Sunday. What about that? Uh, that would be great, man. Uh, but right now, we focus on the pit stop. This is the guys' show, and uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, continue going. All right, Elio Castroneves is continuing. Robin? Serbia 
Serbia has the preferred inside lane in that yellow and black Mecham Auctions car. Scott Dixon in the familiar target colors, the 08 champion. This is a rematch of last year's final. Paul Blevins is there in the middle. He is one of the IndyCar flagmen, checking with both teams. They'll watch the lights now and launch to see if they can get to the semis. Serbia, a shot of both cars. We're going to look at who gets out of the box first. Royal Serbia has had two great runs here at Indy. Six two years ago, fourth last year. Dixon, a two-time Indy car champ, the winner in 08. Serbia gets that launch. We expected that with the preferred line. He'll get to the box first. A little bit slow on the right front for Serbia. This one is going to be tight to the finish. Who's going to launch first? Almost at a dead heat to the line. The winner is Oriol Serbia wow. by a tenth of a second. Serbia to the semifinals, beating last year's champ. Chip Ganassi celebrating his 55th birthday today, but his driver, Scott Dixon, goes down to defeat in that race. Oriole Serbia advances. Now, Serbia got to the box well ahead of Scott Dixon. Again, with a great launch. I think it was a better reaction time, Wally, and more traction. Yeah, I've been really paying attention to when they both spin the rear tires when that green light comes on. And usually that inside lane or the pit lane gets a better launch. And you see how close it is. It doesn't take much. Very tight. <laughs> the reaction from Chip. Marty? Well, I think Scott Dixon had, a, had him there for a second, but did that lane help him a little bit, Dixie? Uh, they did a hell of a job. You know, we, uh, we just came short, but well done, man. Yeah, now we got to win. We, uh, we, we probably beat one of the best out there, so we got to win it. Well, Miller said you win this, you win the race, you can save your team, right? Yes, yeah, what I said. I think uh, if we win here and we win on Sunday, uh, we're probably going to be in Detroit. But if we win on Sunday, I don't know if I care that much if I'm in Detroit, to be honest. <laughs> All right, Orioles Serbia still surviving, Kevin. Chase Selman is the right rear tire changer for Orioles Serbia. You just ask, a tenth of a second. That's how tight it was. Yeah, it was close. Every team out here is good. Uh, we practice hard to do this, and uh, we got it done. What is the feel of the team? You guys have had great success the last two years. The car's been quick in practice all month. Yeah, exactly. The, the car's been great. Uh, it's been a smooth month so far, so we want to go ahead and start it off with a win in this thing and then uh, follow it up with a win uh, hopefully next Sunday. Yeah, and you got to do six to eight of them coming up on Sunday, so this is a good warm-up, right? Yes. Nice job. Shea Selman, they're headed to the semifinals with a 22 team for Panther, Dreyer, and Reinbold. The difference was .102 between Serbia and Dixon. Serbia wins. They're the Indiana Pace mates. And, of course, the Pacers are still in the NBA playoffs. We're wishing them a lot of luck as they go against the Heat. by just a little bit. You hear Paul Blevins giving the drivers the command to get ready to watch the Christmas tree lighting. Dario had that faster time, so he gets that inside lane selection, the one that everybody has wanted all afternoon long. Ryan Hunter Ray told me, I'm going to make up that difference. Remember, we talked about it. It's almost a second. Dario gets into his box very cleanly, but also a very nice launch for Ryan Hunter Ray. The tire's going on. This one will be very close. Dario's team with a little bit of slow done quicker anyway Dario Franchitti with a nice win here in the semifinals advancing to the finals Bob so team Ganassi is in the finals with Dario Franchitti defeating Ryan Hunter Ray by just about a full second and you see the thumbs up there that indicates there are no penalties so we have our first team in the finals Let's take a look at the run. And also at 12-3, that is the fastest time that has been put down yet. And that's what you want because it has been coming down to lane choice. And the next one, Serbia is going to have lane choice. A little slow there on the left front. Yeah, just a touch. Yep. A ton of race. Go, 
Penske crew guys weren't real excited about hearing they had the outside lane. I told Oriol Serbia he was going to have the inside line. As you can imagine, he was quite pleased to hear that. It's been the advantage. Elio maybe gets ahead just a moment. They will get to the box almost exactly the same time. Last round, Serbia was eight-tenths of a second faster. This is going to go down to the finish, but Castro Neves gets away first. And Elio Castro Neves into the finals of the pit stop competition for the eighth time at Indianapolis. Boy, he got away awfully quickly. Yeah, I'm waiting for the thumbs up on this one. There may be a penalty. It looked like that he may have jumped the start. Well, from the looks of the uh, reaction, there's no penalty. Here we go. Even with what appeared to be just a fantastic reaction or potential jump start, he actually arrived a little bit later in the box. Look at that, Serbia actually gets it stopped first. So the Penske crew definitely came back and had a fantastic stop. And Marty is with Elio. Well, I got a thumbs up from IndyCar officials. It was clean. I know you, you were worried you might have left the box a little early, huh? Well, I'll tell you one thing, uh, you got to push the limit here, and actually uh, our left front was a little bit uh, juggling, but these guys are amazing, man. I'm just so surprised. This is awesome. I'm really, uh, it's, let's keep going. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you'll go up against Dario, though. He's won this a few times as well. Oh, wow. So uh, that's, uh, it must be a great show for the fans now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be a great show. We'll see who gets lane choice, but uh, clean stop by Elio Castroneves and his bunch. It will be the classic Ganassi, Ganassi against... Penske in the finals. Dario Franchitti, who got into the finals with a 12.3 second stop against Elio Castroneves, who had a 13.2 second stop to beat Oriol Servia. There was an incredible finish to the Freedom 100 for the Firestone Indy Light Series early today. Stick around right after this break. We'll show you the closest one through four finish in history. today without question one of the best races that I have ever seen Firestone Indy Lights this is turn three look at the fourth place car back there that's Peter Dempsey on the inside is Munoz next is Sage Karam and Gabby Chavez down the front stretch looks what look what happens to Peter Dempsey in fourth he wins it by point zero zero two six seconds and the Four cars were separated by point zero one six three. Absolutely incredible racing and finish. Finishing in fifth position was Zach Beach. It's a good thing he didn't get up there. They wouldn't have room for five on the front stretch. <laughs> Jorge Goncalves was sixth. Jimmy Simpson seventh. Chase Austin eighth. Juan Pablo Garcia ninth. And Jack Hawksworth was tenth. And Kyle O'Gara, who's a high school student graduating tomorrow, finish last well here's how it has gone today in the pit stop challenge now we are down to the final round the two combatants are dario franchiti and elio castro nevis dario had the faster time in the semi-final round so let's pick a winner here jan who do you think well you can just look at the stats anytime you see that you see these kind of numbers down there if he gets a decent start and doesn't make any mistakes, he's going to be tough to beat in that left lane. I agree 100%. I think that left lane is uh, it's just enough to push you over the top. Well, let's see what happens. We've been using Dave Calabro, the public address voice of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He will once again do the introductions. It's time to settle it. Time to get the winner. Dario Franchitti, Elio Casanevez. In the pit stop competition finals, Dario's team, Wayne Westplate, Kevin O'Donnell, Jamie Coates working the left rear, Troy Shellers working right, Dave Pena Airjack, Robbie Page, the Bueller, and Castro Neves going for his sixth win. Left front is Doug Snyder, Sean Hanrahan working right front, 
Mike Brown left rear. Sean Reinemann right rear. Gary Yinks is the air jack man. And the Bueller, Gary Prawl. All right, race fans, who's going to win it? Is it going to be Dario? Or is it going to be Elio getting number six? Who do you want? You want Dario? Or do you want Elio? This is a rematch of the 2006 final. Let's go down for the final run. Well, Bob Dario Franchitti has never won this. He's finished second twice, and Ganassi has only won this one time. He told the officials, kind of jokingly, me kind of seriously, I want you to watch Elio Castroneves leave the box. Make sure he leaves clean. Dario gets to the box first, Kevin. Castroneves won from the outside line in the semifinal. Seems appropriate to the two guys trying to reach the mountain ton and win for the fourth time, going to the finals of his cup competition. Castroneves gets away wow. just a bit ahead, and Elio is going to win by just a hair. Castro Neves, by four tenths of a second, has won his sixth Indianapolis 500 pit stop competition. And Kevin, that was unbelievable. His crew was falling forwards. He went way past the marks. It looks like Castro Neves was completely out of it, and they held it together. $50,000 richer for Elio and his team. Boy, you're right. I was watching that, and as I was watching Captain Nelson's team, I thought, oh, they just gave it away. Yeah, yep. me too. He slid. He came in quick. He slid through. They were scrambling on their knees, and they managed to recover. The always emotional Elio Castro Nevis, I think, is very emotional at this time. Let's see what he does after getting out of the car. <laughs> that <was> awesome. <laughs> 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 It's about time one of these two teams won a race. Yeah, right. It's been a while, huh? I thought Elio would climb something, but he might still. Congratulations from the captain and Tim Cedric. All right, now let's watch this very carefully because it's uh, it's something to see. I'll tell you this. The people who should be climbing something is the crew. Because yeah. watch Castro Neves. He slides way past the marks. Look at that. Yeah. They have to shift one, two, three on their knees to get repositioned. And, and Castro Neves has slid, slid through the pit every time already today. So these guys not, didn't have to just make it up for it once. They had to do it a few times. And it was a problem on the right rear for Dario. I can't believe it. How did we do that? <laughs> we, were, we were down and out. It's the 14th victory for Roger Penske's team. Let's talk to him. Well, I asked him, I said, are you going to climb the fence? He goes, those guys should climb the fence. Man, you slid sideways through your pit, didn't you? Oh, man, I tell you, going against those guys, uh, they are pros, but these guys are awesome. I have to thank the Shelfins, our Ultra Boys. What a, I went for it. I mean, literally, you guys saw it. I was sideways, and I was just waiting. I thought, like, oh, man, I, I can't believe I screwed up this thing. And all of a sudden, I didn't see Dario coming out. I'm like, I think we got a chance. And then all of a sudden, it was great. Great job, guys. These guys are awesome. That's why they're best in the business. Love it. When you, when you got done, you kind of held your hands to your helmet. Were you thinking, I can't believe we did this, or what? I didn't know if it won or not, because it was so close. When I saw Dario be, uh, beside me, I'm like, Oh man, this is gonna be close. It's gonna be close. So, and 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 there's so I get out of the car. I'm like, are we done? Are we not done? Oh, what, what happened? We have one more. So, oh, just great. These guys are awesome. They should. You should interview them, not me. Well, let's get them in there. I was gonna say, come on in, guys. I want to talk to you about how you guys, how you guys saved that. How did you guys save that pit stop? Man, we just kept digging. You didn't have any choice. You know, I've seen you were sideways, weren't you? Absolutely. I had to push my tire out of the way. Uh, Sean Reinemann on the outside rear actually jumped over his tire and changed it the opposite yeah. direction. But, yeah, it was good. We just kept digging, and, you know, that's what it takes. That one catch you guys off guard or what? Big time. That was about the longest I've ever had somebody go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys think it was done with the way he slid into the stall or what? Yeah, for sure. I thought we were going way long, and Dario came in first. I just thought it was done. All right, Elio, su Elio suggested you guys climb the fence. What do you think? 
Ah, uh, no, I'm too old to climb that. <laughs> you're, too, you're not too old. Dude, you're in great shape. What, are you kidding me? Yeah, no, I don't. I, I get hurt enough just walking around. I don't need to climb the fence. <laughs> All right, but an impressive win for these guys today. Robin? RP, uh, that was a hell of a save by the crew because he got a little sideways. And Sean Ryan and Rick's son that really saved the day. Well, it was a great run by both teams, obviously, to square off with Chip and his team is always exciting. You never know what's going to happen. But uh, these guys executed today. Uh, I know that Elio's been a winner here before, but uh, to me, the team was excellent. Uh, got a little bit deep, but the guys recovered, and uh, we're going home with a win, and that's what we want. But uh, the big focus, obviously, is Sunday. All right, it's about time you won a race, I just said on TV. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, I would agree. All right. Back to you, Marty. Uh, I caught up with Sean Ryan. I couldn't find you a second ago, so I understand there were some acrobatics involved for you on that stop. Yeah, a little bit. I just had to jump over my tire and switch the switch the style of changing that we do. But I mean, every one of the guys had to adjust on that stop, and they did an excellent job. You know, a lot of practice. That's what we get. Your dad had done this forever. Did he teach you that one? Oh, yeah. He <laughs> had to adjust on the fly, right? Yeah, he's taught me a couple. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Enjoy the win. Okay. Bob, margin of victory, 379 thousandths of a second. Congratulations to the guys who did it. They won the $50,000. Doug Snyder, left front. Sean Hanrahan, the right front tire changer. Mike Brown on the left rear. Sean Reitman on the right rear. Gary Yinks, the air jack, and the fueler, Gary Prawl. Those are your winners of the 2013 IndyCar Pit Stop Challenge, and they will divide $50,000 for the win. It's the sixth victory for Elio Castro Nevis and the 14th win for Team Penske. Roger has now won seven of the last eight pit stop competitions here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and the celebration continues on pit lane. Kevin? Dario Franchitti, the runner-up, is chatting with the amazing Alex Zanardi, who we had in the booth earlier today during the final IndyCar practice. I know you and the guys wanted that one really badly. We did, but, you know, that's the thing. You could come up against any of these teams, especially the Penske guys. You can't afford any mistake, and we made a little mistake here on the right rear, but um, congratulations to Elio and the, the Penske team. They, they did a better job there, but it's a, it's a fun competition. really showcases what the guys can do, and you know they all want to win it and it's a great show i think for the fans so uh you know it's uh it's fun but we'll, we'll really focus on on sunday sunday's a really important one and uh we'll see you all then yeah, today's a lot of fun but we remember sunday and we've remembered you three times dario franchiti a chance to join the legends he's already in that status right now but going for number four on sunday franchiti Finishes second in the pit stop challenge, being defeated by Elio Castroneves. We have about uh, 40 minutes to spend with you. This will be fun just to uh, talk about what's happened this month and what we think is going to happen on Sunday for the 97th running of the Indianapolis 500. Elio Castroneves, Team Pinsky, wins the pit stop challenge back in a moment. There's a $50,000 check that goes to Team Penske. Elio Castroneves was behind the wheel when they defeated Dario Franchitti just a few moments ago to win this year's Pit Stop Challenge. Well, the celebration here in Indianapolis continues. The 500 Festival Parade will be tomorrow at 10.30 in the evening on the NBC Sports Network. Don't forget the Indianapolis 500, of course, on Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ABC. Marty? Well, let's talk to Tim Sendrick. Always nice to see your guys collecting some money, isn't it, Tim? A day like this, you know, where it's a team effort to, uh, to have a competition to where they're, the, they're in the limelight. And uh, today, you know, I don't know, in the, in the slow lane, it's hard to even give it a chance. And uh, the fact that those guys won in the slow lane all three times today and, and the way they did it, you know, with Elio winning that thing six times, the driver's got a little bit to do with it. And the guy's certainly enjoying it. There they go. Now they're going to climb the fence, Tim, collectively as a group. The first time here. First time he did that. <laughs> you do remember that. And they all 
said they were too old for that, Tim, when I asked him to do that earlier. Just need to do that on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure, can do it already. Let's talk about that. So how are the cars overall as a group? How's Penske organization? I think they're really good. I, I think it's really a matter of um, trying to decide on Sunday how the weather conditions are going to affect how you start the race. But I think you'll see a lot of guys change the downforce throughout the day, uh, depending on where they are out on the racetrack. But track position is going to be key, but I think it's going to be a tough race up front all day. You saw a fairly racy final practice. You kind of expect that in the 500 as well? I do. I do. I, I think it's going to be that way all day long. You know, with the way the conditions look, it's going to be really fast. And uh, I think you're going to have to get your elbows out on race day. The Honda surprised you at all today? They, they came up with a ton of speed all of a sudden. Well, I think they came here prepared. Um, qualifi qualifying wasn't really an indication last year, and I don't think it will be on race day. It's going to come down to the execution of the teams and the drivers, as always. All right, thanks for your time, Tim. Thank you. All right, they win the pit stop competition, but they're hoping, Bob, they win on Sunday. Well, and certainly one of the things that has to work on race day is activity on pit lane. But at the same time, Simon Pagano was the fastest in the final practice today. Jan, does that mean that Honda has pulled the rabbit out of the hat, as you have often indicated? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly saw for a while there Dario Franchitti. We also saw Scott Dixon up there, then Simon Pagano. Even Catherine Lake for a while was in the top three. So there's definitely... It's not that they've changed mechanically the engine, but they've changed the mapping. And they've been trying to throw a race map. We know last year they actually changed physical engines before the race, and everyone was like, what happened here? Now they've just been working and working and working on the dyno, and at least we know they're closer. So there are so many things that can go wrong during the race. It's yeah. not just engine. It's it's set up, and we heard Tim talk about downforce. So there's just so many factors to be in. Consider. Yeah, and being at the right place and the right time or the other way around, uh, wrong place at the wrong time. And and this is a race that you just, you have to be patient for most of the race. You have to keep yourself in a, in a position to be able to win this race. The last, that last quarter of the race is when everybody goes. But as we saw in practice today, these cars are very bunched up. It's a very, very competitive field. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how these guys, how these drivers play it out. It's not, not so much really about strategy, but it is a lot about track position. And I think we're going to see this drafting and where you're in you've got to have yourself in position um, at the finish because I think you're going to see a slingshot at the end that could win you the race Joseph Newgarden was a rookie here at the Speedway last year and when the Firestone Indy Light Series when these four cars came down for the finish he was in the broadcast booth and this was his reaction he was excited as everybody else for that one, two, three, four finish of the race, which was won by Peter Dempsey. Earlier, we spent a life in the day of Joseph Newgarden.
haven't had to clean up your own mess. <laughs> Joseph Newgarden, a great race driver and obviously a good entertainer. My, qu my question is, where did those two kids come from? They were in the front of the grocery cart. Oh, well, we'll wrap it up in a moment. Concert still going on in the Turn 3 area of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, wrapping things up here on Carb Day for the 97th running of the Indianapolis 500. Again, earlier today, Simon Pagino was the fastest in the final practice. Peter Dempsey won the Firestone Indy Lights race, and Elio Castro Nevis and Team Penske once again won the Pit Stop Challenge. Record 34 lead changes on Sunday, uh, race day last year. Will we see that many this year, Wally? I think so, yeah. I think this is going to be one of the best Indy 500s we've seen in a long time. I agree. When it's cool, everybody likes their car. When they like their car, they're going to be aggressive. It's supposed to be very cool and comfortable on race day for 2013. Enjoy it on ABC at 11 o'clock. Coming up next, the Dan Patrick Show. Be sure to watch Indy 500 Festival Parade tomorrow at 10.30 Eastern. The Eyes on IndyCar Series returns to NBC Sports Network Saturday, June 15th at 4 o'clock Eastern for the Milwaukee Mile. For more information on the Eyes on IndyCar Series, log on to NBCSports.com. For Marty Snyder, Kevin Lee, Robin Miller, Jan Bikas, and Wally Dahlenbach, I'm Bob Jenkins. So long from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway.